game plays right here. Are you ready for some football? Your sports leader, WHS Shelby, WLON Lincoln, WCSL, Cherville Gastonia. And good afternoon, and welcome to everybody at KTC Broadcasting. Dot com with Slider Sliders down to the twenties. There, we're well, probably a little hot online for everybody. Oh, I think I'm good now. KTC Broadcasting. Dot com. Hunter Yancey's here. Uh, Kevin Hastings and I. I forgot to ask if Tom was coming today. I'm guessing Back he's, not, he's not here, so it's just going to be Hunter and myself today. Uh, got a good show uh, planned and and slightly prepped for today. Uh, got a little list of XFL news. We got NBA preseason or whatever you want to call it. A little NHL, some baseball. I'm glad and, you put uh, NHL on there. I did. You, you mentioned the Canes, and I, 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 I'm that's one sport hunter that I don't mind watching. I, I like it. What's really fun is I'm the same way actually. Is really playing those is is playing their video games. Yeah. You ever played hockey video games? I have. Those are actually really good. And I, was, I have one. I think I have NHL. Was it 19, 18, 19? One of the not the newest one, but right. yeah, I have one. It's it's fun. Now I had. Now when I say I have played them, it's been a while since yeah. I've played. I've only played one on like the the the, the newer generations, like the PS threes or fours. Right. Well, I'm talking like Sega Genesis, mm-hmm. NES. Like I had I had a soccer game on Sega and a and a hockey game that I I played a lot of them both. Right. I figured out there was a. There was a move in the, in the soccer game. You know what I mean? They don't they, back then. They, it's not like they were that in depth with it. Mm-hmm. So you could do bicycle kicks. Right. And any time a ball got near you for uh, and and you were within I don't know however close, you could just rail off a bicycle kick towards the goal, and uh, that was pretty fun. But the hockey uh, was back. This is how old it was uh, back when Mario Mew was playing, and Yammer Yager. I was playing. I played with the Penguins, and he was dominant, and I scored a ton of goals with with him. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why I like the Penguins. I just that was just the team I like playing with. Uh, I think Gretzky was still there. Messier was still playing. Uh, Kings, Rangers, Lindros. So back, so that's that's it's kind of way back when, but uh, nothing that, uh, that that has anything to do with anything now. Uh, you know, now that I said that, I ought to check one out one time. Maybe a, an old used one for like five or ten. There bucks you go. Or three or four bucks. Fine, you know? Yeah, you can find one online. So you said you watched some hockey the other night. Yeah, I watched a little bit of it. Um, it was for some reason they have the Hurricanes playing at like the middle of the friggin' day. <laughs> As they did the same thing today, they're actually going on right now. Uh, the Hurricanes and the Rangers. Well, the Hurricanes quick. took Game One. So, oh, and, and real quick, we talked about we talked a little bit about biased media last week. Yeah, and I'm on ESPN right now. They're the World Wide website here. Yes, and I'm just going to go down the list and and. and you would think they would have them in a list of an, you know important popular sports, but that's mm-hmm. not how they do it. Mm-mm. They do it if they have if they have contracts with you, and <laughs> it, and it depends on like how much if ESPN's actually making money off of you. So I'm gonna go down the list before I get to some of the sports: NFL, NBA, MLB are the top three. Soccer, MMA is fifth. 
They're making a lot of money right now. Golf is sixth. NCAA football, NCAA men. So that's four, eight sports. Ninth is boxing. Tenth is the CFL. Yeah. Eleventh is chalk. Now I see what they did, Hunter. They put the first eight of the ones they wanted, and then and the from rest boxing of down is alphabetical, alphabetical order. Ha! I figured it out halfway through, but still, uh, just to find the NHL, you have to scroll down below. Cricket, eSports, horse racing, NBA G League, NCAA women, and then you get to the N- NHL. Like, but, you know, it used to be a point in time where, you know, that was there were six sports. Mm-hmm. Baseball, basketball, football, hockey, and racing. Mm-hmm. And then you had tennis. Uh, it was, was basically your, your next big one, but now just looking down through here like tennis and now yeah they're all in i mean wwe is still listed yeah uh, on, on this list that's above the x games but uh definitely hard to find go ahead hunter about your hockey i was, I was just want, i just making a point that oh no i it's mean it's so I, hard to find i don't have much to go into the right. in depth about hockey i'm like you I, I don't mind sitting here and watching a hockey game problem is i don't quite understand some of the rules from the aspect of it like icing and some of that it's, stuff it's soccer on ice it's close it's it's Very close, close but it's 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 not the so same so icing is basically from what i get is that it's kind of like offsides in soccer i think is that but the puck can't you can't just like because, see, like, I understand basic offsides. You can't just right. cherry pick behind the right. defense. So they have offsides, yes. but they also yes. have ice. So you can't you can't pass the pass the puck to nobody, basically. Then you just mm-hmm. go chase it. That's right. the icing part is that you just can't – you can't just, you know, I, I know I got a fast guy. I'm going to run it off the backboard and him go mm-hmm. and chase it down. So yeah. That's kind of basically the rule from what I get from playing the games and watching. All I know is, is – I mean, the, the way they have it set up. I is, played some hella roller hockey back in the day. Roller hockey. Yeah, you ever played that? No, not yeah. I don't. Not on. on oh, mm. you play it, and what you do is you play it on a tennis court. The tennis court. And then you know, there's two or three courts beside each right. other, so you just so one side's the net and the other side's the fence, and you play. I played play like long ways. Like I played that. like makeshift street hockey yeah. in like a cul-de-sac with some buddies one time. I put up, but it was rest. like we didn't have we didn't have roller skates. It was just us like with small hockey sticks, okay. a, t- a tennis ball with, on your shoes, on our shoes. Okay, and we just smacked the hell out of our tennis ball. I rode up in Brett Pascoe's neighborhood is last year, or the year before during football season, and his the kids next door were playing actual roller like they, somebody roller had hockey. a goalie suit on. Oh, like they were the, the cul-de-sac was filled with like ten people out there, and somebody actually had a had a goal. And I'm like, yeah. we didn't do that. No. We just were like, we made a very small goal area on the fence. Yeah, and and said that's where you got to hit it, and that's pretty much how we did that. But and and then of course to do the icing, I guess thing with no goalie, we, we said you couldn't shoot until you got past half mm. half court, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Uh, so, but anyway, uh, hurricanes. Uh, what are they doing here, Hunter? Is everybody in the playoffs? Or what, uh, it, what exactly yeah, did you I tell can, me? They were? I can tell you exactly what it is. It's day. a 24-team round-robin tournament to get to the playoffs. Okay. So what it is, there are a certain amount of teams that are already qualified to the next round. Okay. So the rest of them, the rest of the league essentially, or the other, ah, I'm going to say like 16 to 18 teams, that are playing right now. It's round robin. They got best of five. Okay. First, this is best of five. Right now, the Carolina Hurricanes and the New York Rangers are one of the team or one is one of the matchups. Uh, obviously, we're here in Carolina, so I'm paying attention more to the Hurricanes because um, they had a good squad last year. You know, I would have probably I would have probably attended a game by now if they were in Charlotte. I would say I, that. yes. That's I'm not that's, going to Raleigh that's what's, for it. that's that's the problem with me. <laughs> uh, but that would have been the only reason I went there last year, though, is because they were making a little bit of a run in the playoffs. Yeah, they right knocked now, off last the year or the year before's champion in the first round. They beat Washington last year. So I, after I saw that was happening, I was like, okay, maybe they got a little bit of a squad now and, and they can actually make a run. Um, but right now, they took Game One over the New York Rangers. The Hurricanes did, uh, and it, it, as of right now, in the final period, they're up three to one. Okay. Uh, I know there's still 15 minutes to go, but I, you know that would be good to go ahead and get a, a two-game lead and a best of five. If that means all you got to do is just this next one. Sure, all the pressure's on you, but all the pressure's is on the Rangers too, not to give up an early goal or to give up some, uh, you know, give up anything easy, mm-hmm. or else it's over. You know, they're done. So I, I'm excited for it. I think the way that it's set up is good because. I don't know exactly how many teams there are in hockey, but it didn't look like there were many, like how the bubble is for basketball. It didn't seem like everybody was just left out, kind of like how basketball was. We're just going to take this select few of 22, 
we can already guarantee you that there's only 16 that are going to make it, so you guys are just going to play eight games, and that's going to be it. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it's... I feel like it was a little bit more inclusive. Four, seven, three, four. I got eight, 16, 24, then seven. So 31 teams. Possibly. Is what I have. Possibly. For for them. Hurricanes, uh, fourth place in the Metropolitan Division behind Washington, Philadelphia, and Pittsburgh. Uh, if that makes any any sense to you, the Metropolitan Division <laughs> with the Islanders, Columbus, Rangers, and Jersey Devils. The way that they're doing this too is it, it, they almost have two the bubbles. E's are eliminated. They yeah. almost have two bubbles. Yeah, because they're playing in two at two located arenas in Canada. Uh, and what it is is they're the teams on the East Coast are like playing up in Toronto. And the teams on the West Coast, I guess, are playing up in okay, one of the, one of the, about, and one of the teams. Bubbles. I know yeah, they're yeah. playing in St. Louis, uh-huh. in the Blues Arena, because I saw some tweets from from some from some folks in St. Louis. So I do know that. All right, Hunter, um, let's talk a little baseball. So there was our hockey minute. Hockey, we gave you a blip. We gave you a blip for the Hurricanes. But I'll say this: Hey, the Hurricanes. go Hur- go Hurricanes. Go Hur- and speaking of Hurricanes, go Hurricanes while there's one making its way up the coast right now. I mean, we, yeah, that that was another thing. Should we name our sports teams after natural disasters? I, well, I, I mean, don't know. Death I, and destruction. I don't know if I'm that offended by it. And, but. and, and high insurance costs and payments. High insurance premiums. <laughs> Dang you, I'm hurricanes. Uh, Dang you, Mother Nature. I did see uh, <laughs> uh, people talking about a, a black bear in Florida the other day on something, and just reading people like, there's black bears in Florida? And I'm like... Your hockey team's named the Florida Panthers, and you don't yeah. think there's any black bears Let's in say they're Panthers. Place. They're Panthers in Florida. They're Jeez. just not black. Right. They, they, they're, they, they, they look like, coo- they they look like Bert, cougars, Bert, Bert, but... I don't, I don't they know. look like cougars. They look like cougars, but they're not. They're Panthers. It's the same thing. Is it? Yes. It just depends on where you are and what you call it. Right. See, now that confuses me. And mountain lions, cougars, and pumas are all the same cat. Now, see, that confuses me. <laughs> <laughs> that is so confusing. Same cat. So if I go down here and say, say go Carolina Cougars, nobody can really get mad at me. Or if you find a lady older than you, you can call her out line okay. if you want to, honey. All right. No. <laughs> no. Uh-uh. Is that, is that, uh-uh. No. You don't want to go there? That's not. No. I thought that's what you were asking. No, 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 no. I'm asking about if I go down here to the Bank of America Stadium. Yeah. And no, I those go down are Panthers. here. Those Panthers. That's a different. I know. That's the Black Panther. Well, panth- Black Panthers are actually leopards. <laughs> I'm just going to. I'm going to ruin your day with your biology today. I think that's right. We'll go. I'll, I'll get you the exact what the, what, the, what the hell, man? I'm sorry I brought up the, the name. I was going to mention some of these have some cool names. Like, I like the sharks and the ducks and the coyotes. Yeah, yeah I like uh, them, too. Names that, that, that aren't in, in other sports. Uh, I don't know about the Minnesota Wild. They kind of copied it with the Timberwolves. They're the same same mascot. I wolf. think that's... I thought it was a grizzly bear. No, that's a wolf. Is it? That's definitely a... It's definitely a Minnesota wolf. I guess the wolves are that bad up there, Hunter. I guess they're that See, bad. Or is it a honey badger? <laughs> Jeez, I don't know. I don't know, but the NHL does. <laughs> like, if you're just talking, because I know nicknames have gotten a lot of flack over the last few, you know, weeks, going on to a month or so. But the NHL has got some cool nicknames. They really do. I do like the Flyers. The Blues, I, I, I'm okay with that. The Canucks. It's half the people are like, what the hell is a Canuck or a yeah. Canuck, however Canuck. you say it? The a Canuck? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know, but I think their logo <laughs> is sick because it's like a, it's like an orca. <laughs> and orcas are dope. <laughs> That's all I got to say about it. Is, is it cool? Would I want it on my shirt or my, on my hat? Absolutely. I think it's sick. So I'm going to have to, I'm looking these up now. Hunter has me thinking about them. Like, like what's, what's a Canuck, Canuck? And, and what's the wild? The only one that I'm kind of like, okay, you really couldn't have done something else was the Toronto Maple Leafs. I was like, really? <laughs> I'm so scared of a Maple Leaf. Dude. And it's blue. Leaves aren't blue. I know. They're not blue. If you wanted to keep it, you know, A Canuck accurate. is a slang term for a Canadian. Oh, it's a slang term. Yes. Oh, so Originally no, but- referring to the Dutch or French Canadian, so... Those people can start a protest right now. Yeah, if they're if they're. Uh, I don't know what the killer whale has to do with it, but yeah. Wait, where is Van? Isn't Vancouver? Vancouver uh, yeah. Isn't that western part of Canada? 
Yes, and I don't think there's any what, oceans. In, I don't know. Is Vancouver on the actual West Coast? They think, might be because they're really close to Portland and all that. So mm-hmm. they might maybe they were in that. The, when because they were, when the Grizzlies were in Vancouver. They were in Portland's division. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I believe that's right. <laughs> I believe that's right. Um, I think I'm that's a, factually accurate. <laughs> I'm gonna figure out this uh, Minnesota Wild thing. I'm pretty sure that's a that's a. It wolf, looks like a honey right. badger. It does got a wide a wide head or a wolverine or something. That's what it looks like. Things wild, man. I didn't. I thought they would at least just call themselves the wolves. But there's already a Red Wolves, isn't there? In uh, not in hockey. Oh no, not in hockey. That's right. That's um, Arkansas State. I'm now. I'm now really intrigued. Well, Hunter, you might be right on the bear. It, it is a bear. It is a Holy bear. Holy bear! Huh? I did. I did Look not, at that. I did not think they were know that. I didn't. I didn't know enough history about it to go there. But, I just based but, off of what I I'd saw from it, and it looks this, like I gotta it. I got to pull this up for, for, for folks. This is a. Uh, that's Hunter. There we go. It's a bear. Look. Over to the right. And look, I'll tell you what. This guy over here. I like that. <laughs> I like that logo, too. You know, if I would have stared at it long enough, yeah. I probably would have lent your way that it's a bear. The, the head is definitely wider than a wolf. So, yeah, yeah, I just always assumed it was a wolf. Wow. I think it looks cool. Uh, I like the name Senators. I think that's a cool name. If I'm not mistaken, I think someone said Washington years ago tried to get um, the Sentinels as a trademark for one of their names uh, for the football yeah. team. Uh, the Lightning is not bad. You know, we're going over NHL teams for those of you that are like, what the hell are they talking about? <laughs> but uh, I don't, well, know, I don't know what a blue I don't know what a blue jacket is, though, for Columbus. About, I know that's Ohio, but is that like a – does that have a, some sort of affiliation with a with some sort of airline? It may be uh, the like, name of the uh, – Because uh, it's not the Blue it. Angels. I'd tell uh, you that. Yeah, there you go. Um, New York Islanders, what we all – what is that like a? They're on the island. Long Island. Yeah, is that where they're playing. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. The, well, the, oh, you got to change the New York Rangers. Yeah, that was actually named after a guy from Texas called Tex, one of the original owners or coaches or something. Yeah. And so, yeah. How about all all these teams from Buffalo end up using the Buffalo logo, but they got a different nickname, like a Buffalo Bill or Buffalo Sabers. Yeah, the Sabers. But the logo. Is I still, do like the Sabers. I was growing up. I had two jer- two hockey jerseys that I just found randomly at like a TJ Maxx. And I mm-hmm. thought they looked really cool. One of them was the Boston Bruins, and one of them was the Buffalo Sabres jersey. And I thought it looked really cool. A lot of people had the Ducks jerseys when I was, mighty, when I was mighty, small. Well, the mighty, the movies. yeah, the Mighty Ducks, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm a lot of people. If, if you had a jersey, it was it was usually that one uh, as a kid. A lot of people had Penguins jersey. A lot of people have always liked the Pittsburgh Penguins stuff. Are the Ducks still a team? No. Yeah. They are? Anaheim Ducks. They just, they're not the Mighty Ducks anymore. Okay. I think when they sold part of the You're franchise. right. Anaheim Ducks. You're right. From uh, We don't have many teams just called the Ducks outside of Oregon. Mm. What's wrong with a duck? No. You want to talk about a ferocious <laughs> animal? Someone <laughs> named their team the geese. The, they're ferocious. Oh, my God. Have you ever crossed one? They got teeth, dude. I, I've I've been approached by a, a geese but as soon as i stepped to him he backed up dude they can be <laughs> ferocious man they <laughs> my, really can my sister had her uh fingers bit by a geese when she was very small I'm trying to give it give them crackers they're food. very vicious all right honey. they are vicious Let's go i think maybe my favorite name though is definitely uh the new the team that just uh became a team their expansion team the golden knights mm-hmm. they look really cool too i like that all right we can move on to baseball hockey we gave you a lot of love but as of right now the Hurricanes are still leading the Rangers, so here we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Under 10 minutes. All so right, let's, baseball, get it. let's get it. Here's your question of the day, Hunter. Okay. And we, we're we going to go with, for the teams that are 3 and 7 or worse mm-hmm. in Major League Baseball, Yeah. are they currently, um, are they done, per se? Uh, I remember last year uh, in 162 games, I can't remember the exact record. I think it was three and seven or three and thirteen, something like that. In the first or second week of baseball, I claimed the Red Sox are done, and and I was I was mocked by Terry and them for being so early on them, but they didn't make the playoffs, Hunter. And, and in a sixty game season, you start off at three and seven. Are you out of it uh, right now? And we can go through the teams if you want. Yeah, we can go through the teams. I'm pulling the standings up at the same time. Yeah, I was trying to get myself. Lined up a little bit. People can see the hat. They can see the hat. Hunter's uh, got a soccer hat. I on. do. In fact, I'm ready for Charlotte FC when they come oh here God. in 2022. Shout out to my aunt. Not sure if she's tuned in yet, but she did in fact buy this for me. So thank you, Aunt Mary. <laughs> Let's thank go. you. 
Let's go football club. Hey, let's do it. Is that what you say? I don't know. What's the? Do they got a team cheer yet? No. It's too early. No. It's too early, and the reason why I say it's too early is a lot of times in soccer, it's it's fan-driven. Yeah. The fans usually will come up with the chants and whatnot, and so I think that's one thing I really do like about it. It's, so it's going to suck for them as they go through all this, and they don't have any fans to start the first I year. Because Tepper's rebuilt is remodeling. Like, people don't realize or get it, uh, and Panther fans are going to be in a shock, but if you guys ain't been paying attention, um, the color of the – of the soccer teams are the exact same colors of the Panthers mm-hmm. for the most part. Yeah. The, the the teal looks a little darker. Also, not as blue. It looks more on the green end. Mm-hmm. So if you had a little shade, you'd go there. But with that said, it makes it very easy to to put up decorations in that stadium with the same yeah. exact colors. And they've already announced that they were moving PSL holders that were on the front in so many rows that they were moving them because guess what? Soccer players can't come out of the corner. I don't know why. Yeah. But, but they but he has to have them come out of the middle in the middle, so he's taking. I and, guess he's. And bu- I guess he's building the them zone. a locker room too. And they're taking some out of the end zones for the. I, I, I guess the 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 goal has to pretty much go right up against that back. Well, wall, that maybe. and it's. I mean, soccer fields are wider and longer. Well, technically, a football field is still 120 yards, but they only go 100. Right. right. Um, but a soccer field. It's a it's one twenty and it's usually like by depending some are wider than others but like sixty five yeah. sixty five. So you've got to be able wide. to get a net, pretty much where the goalpost is to the wall. Mm-hmm. I can't. I, Pan, Carolina don't have that much room, so I'm guessing that they're backing it up a few seats. But he's taking yeah. out a bunch of seats to placate the soccer, and and then when we get through this and maybe have half field stadiums and and uh, we got all kinds of questions with this. But as far as baseball is concerned, Hunter, we got Red Sox again, who I buried last year. They are three and seven. Kansas City's Terry's Royals. Three and seven. The great Mike Trout's Angels are three, three and, seven. and seven. You can almost bury the team just in front of them. They haven't they've only played two less games. I mean, are the Angels catching the A's and Astros? No. In anything? No. I mean they're two games back, but come on. It's tough when but see, you know, we could sit here and say it's tough to bury teams now because it's so early, but then again, there are only sixty games. <laughs> so Every game is equivalent to only, only what was it? They're almost equivalent to two and a half, three games in a regular season. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry. What are you doing? <laughs> what? Who's here? Uh, Andre was like banging in the wall, walking oh, the wall, and I was like, oh. "What's he doing?" <laughs> no, I'm just saying, you know. But these games, every yeah. game now, because it is short, and they're equal to almost what two and a half, three games, if if the math was right. Roughly. So two, it's two so, and so one 2. loss 6. is the same as two and a half games back. That's what it is, essentially. Pirates are two and seven. Yeah, bury Mets them. are three and seven. Bury them. Diamondbacks three and seven. Bury them. So, all right, Cardinals are two and three. You got to lose four in a row to get there. They're they're in the Corona stages. The Marlins are have Corona, um, and, and and again, Hunter, it, it doesn't. We haven't seen a single report that that one of these athletes has had to be hospitalized yet. Mm-hmm. So, again, we always ask, and we have been asking, how serious is it? Um, and if you have 30-man replacement players, like the Cardinals should have brought two guys in Sunday, right? Yeah. And then play the games. Mean, I thought and that see, was what's so point. crazy is you said 30-man, but there's, it's a 60-man. Right. They got they got 30 extra they got players. They got tons of guys they can choose from. They got tons of guys they and, can and, choose well, from. And how, many day, and how many times, Hunter, do you – during the regular season or any other time where two guys are hurt, they don't they just, stop the game no, uh-uh. or two guys hurt. They so, call up from the AAA. So they've tested some Cardinals, and we don't know who or, or, and how many he's got it now. A couple of uh, clubhouse folks do do as well. Um, Jack, did you see the tweet from Jack Flaherty, what he was doing mm-hmm. in his room? No. He put the uh, mattress up against the wall so he could throw. <laughs> but his quote was, Hope I don't miss like Joe Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> now, Go let me tell wild. you, don't you think that was a load of crap that they gave him eight games? Right. Yeah, that, that's a load of crap. Yeah. Is that what? That's two games for a pitcher, roughly, is what they're trying to do, is what that ends up to be. And, you know, if he's a if he's a hitter, he probably got two or three games. But Yeah. You don't, you don't want people throwing at people because, A, it hurts. You could injure someone. Well, you don't really want anybody throwing that high. Well, that, if you aim, if, that. You, if you aim for the head, now that's 
That's taking it to the extreme. But I don't think they gave him the eight games necessarily for throwing at Bregman. Then they gave him the eight games because he basically instigated the fight with Carrera. But I'm sorry that Carrera was a little punk-ass bitch and couldn't just take it. <laughs> he couldn't just take it. Was that who he was throwing at? No, it's not. He threw it at Bregman. Oh, okay. But the one when he was walking off the field and was he, pouting he was at him and taunting him. <laughs> yeah, it was, he was taunting Carrera. And okay. that's what caused the, the was benches. Was coach? No. Carrera's a Carrera is a Correa oh, yeah. is a player. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. The yeah. coach was was it was slash fired last year, was it? Yeah. Oh uh, uh, God, what's his name as the head coach there now? Uh, basically, uh, I used to coach the Nationals. The, a lot of folks mad at it as as far as, um, you know, the Astros cheated at at, at the game and won a mm-hmm. World Series, and none of the players got, got suspended, suspended and, and the guy who threw at the player for cheating got eight games. So, uh, which I understand. I understand that is. Like, if you look at it optically, that's awful. Like, mm-hmm. it, it doesn't make any sense. That's just like coming back to Rob Manford even saying it's just a hunk of metal. Talking about oh, when he said that about the trophy, it's like, shouldn't they have fired him right then? Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, maybe. But the owners, he's, he worked for the owners, so that, that that's that's probably what they think it is, or some of them. A lot of them do. Well, yeah, some a lot of, of them don't even compete. I was going to say, a lot anything. of them that don't compete, they I mean, just show up and play. I mean, looking at the Cardinals division alone, um, the Pirates are two and seven. I can't remember the last time they were good. So, like, what have they been doing the last twenty five years? Other than even when Andrew McCutcheon was there, they were subpar, and right. it was just his name that people paid attention to. It, now he's with the Phillies, and nobody even pays him any more attention because Bryce Harper is a bigger name than he is. Yeah, I mean, that yeah, I don't think they've. The Reds are four and the five. Phillies are one. They and haven't two. really atten- They haven't really played in the last. I want you to think about that. The Phillies are one and two. They have played three games while everybody else has played ten. <coughs> At Miami's least nine played or ten. Three Phillies played three, and that's it as far as the Cardinals have played five. They're they're sitting there at two and three. Um, they 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 they've got a. I think what the MLB needs to do is back up the start of the playoffs to where they can at least have a gap period and make up these postponements if they don't just want to continuously have double headers every weekend. Mm. I think that would be smart by the MLB um, because I think me and you can both, we both sit here and we've been saying it since they maybe even thought of the idea. You, you, don't, you don't cancel it at this point. And if you do, you do it right now. There's no, there's no fondling around to where 15, 20 games in. There's no sense. It would be a waste. So the baseball you would have to players do it right now. didn't want to agree to a bubble like the NBA in Arizona. They they refused that. What Which, if Hunter at this point the owners and them came back to them and said and said postseason po- we're going to the bubble? Because then te- you'd be get you'd only have sixteen teams mm-hmm. and then you'd be getting rid of half in a week. And you'd be and getting rid of the travel. Two weeks. You'd be getting rid of the travel right. because then back you wouldn't and back and forth. Yeah. So instead of having, you know, seven times eight, basically fifty travel games in the first round. Or whatever it is, well, half of them. So twenty-eight something, tra- twenty-eight thirty traveled games. You would have them all in one spot in the playoffs, and then also, if you have to push games back by moving games to Arizona or Florida, the weather will be good enough for you to be able to just keep playing in in November mm-hmm. if if that's an issue. So, um, I like that because what teams can't complain about because they wouldn't have any this year is they can't complain about home field advantage. They no fans. Right. There'd be no fans in the stands anyways. I mean, what's the point? It's the same thing with the NBA. Nobody's having home field advantage right now. They just got to, like, you just got to keep rolling. The, the only, I guess the only home field advantage you got right now is... Um, your home stadium. Is, is your mu- your walk-up music. Your walk-up music. <laughs> and, and, I mean, I guess you know, you know where you want to put it in your own stadium just based on where the, fin- where the fence is. And then you, all, you know, also, you know, you, you also know where to find the mascot giving signals in center field if you're the true, <laughs> if you're very the Astros, true. very true. out there with flags, curve, curve. Um, I don't mind that idea. I don't mind that idea at all uh, because I think we also, I didn't quite understand why they couldn't just do a bubble. Mm-hmm. I mean, what's it going to hurt? You don't want if you don't want to even have all thirty-two teams there, then you do have two facilities you can split from in Arizona and in Florida. The players were the ones that were against that one. I don't. I guess that, that, I guess they just didn't want to. Say they That's didn't want to be away from their families. Okay. Well, look where it's got you now. <laughs> look where it's got you now. Now some of you are going to be forced to be away from your families because you can't pass coronavirus to them. I mean, 
I'm looking for updates on on Cardinal stuff. I'm still not getting it. a lot of a lot of uh, speculation, of course, uh, as as usual. Instead of as of on. Rob Manfred said, as of right now, they are still continuing the season. He said he's not a quitter, so they're not going to give up on the season. And I've been saying it. They they are built. They have set it up to where if someone does get it, you can continue going. And I, I try. I made this statement well, we the other day. They did, well, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. At least that's how it looks <laughs> optically, what and what us. they told us on paper. That's, that's what exactly what it was. Us. And I just had this conversation with some buddies of mine. I was with t- Saturday night. I said, "Look, there's no reason for t- for the MLB to stop. There's none because the way they have this set up is: look, if we catch it fast, maybe one or two players get it." and we can get them in quarantine and clean the facilities, then all we got to do is pull up two other players. If five players get it, can we nip it in the bud fast enough, get them out of the facility, clean it up, have them quarantined for however long they have to, and we got five players. God, for God's sakes, let's just say they only had 20 people to pull from. That's still 20 <laughs> other people you can pull up. Well, play players. Yeah. If I, five players get it, can we nip it in the bud fast all, enough, the get them out of the facility, the right clean it up, have them quarantined for however down. long they have to, and we got more five more players. players God, for God's sakes, let's just say they only had 20 you people to pull from. That's still 20 other people you can pull up. Well, players. If five players get it, can we nip it in the bud fast enough, get them out of the facility, clean it up, have them quarantined for however long they have to, and yeah, we got more five more players. players that now, for God's sakes, let's just say they only had 20 people to pull from. That's still 20 other people you can pull up your players. players. Yeah. If five I'm players do it, can we nip it in the bud fast I'm enough to get them out of the facility, done. clean it up, and have them quarantined for however long they have to? And we got five players. Now, for God's sakes, let's just say they only had 20 people to pull from. That's still 20 other people you can pull up your players. If five players do it, can we nip it in the bud fast enough to get them out of the facility, clean it up, and have them Quarantine for however long they have to, and we got five players. Now, for God's sake, let's just say they only had 20 people to pull from. That's still 20 other people you can pull up your players. If five players do it, can we nip it in the bud fast enough to get them out of the facility, clean it up, and have them quarantined for however long they have to, and we got five players. Now, for God's sake, let's just say they only had 20 people to pull from. That's still 20 other people you can pull up your players. If five players do it, can we nip it in the bud fast enough to get them out of the facility? Clean it up and have them quarantined for however long they have to. And we got five players. Now, for God's sake, let's just say they only had 20 people to pull from. That's still 20 other people you can pull up your players. If five players do it, can we nip it in the bud fast enough to get them out of the facility? Clean it up and have them quarantined for however long they have to. And we got five players. Now, for God's sake, let's just say they only had 20 people to pull from. That's still 20 other people you can pull up your players. If five players do it, can we nip it in the bud? Fast enough to get them out of the facility, clean it up, and have them quarantined for however long they have to. We got five players. Now, for God's sake, let's just say they only had 20 people to pull from. That's still 20 other people you can pull up your We're uh, working on that. What about now? Should be good now. What's it looking like now on your on your board? It's green. Sorry, folks. Uh, just notified that we had some sound and weird stuff going on. I think we got all the buttons pushed right. Andre's going to go check on it for us, but yeah. Uh, Got to make sure you hit all the buttons, all right? And I missed one or two over here, but I think I got them right. Well, uh, what I, just what I was saying was, so let's just say two best So we need teams. to repeat everything we had in hockey, folks? Is that what y'all want? Is that what? Y'all want, want us to repeat all to the hockey back? stuff? All the hockey nah, stuff? No, let's, let's... Oh, okay. No, I, we'll just stick with baseball. <laughs> we'll put it this way. Uh, every team that's 2-7 and seven or 3-7, and seven, we're burying you and saying your season's over. Don't bother watching. That's the Pittsburgh Pirates, Arizona Diamondbacks, New York Mets fans, uh, Kansas City Royals, Boston Red Sox. And of course, Mike Trout's Angels, the least surprising thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, they're in dead last. So, uh, yeah, we'd bury those if they're two or three and seven right now. But what I'm getting at is so let's say this American League Championship. If we just go off base, we've got the two best records right now. It would be the Yankees and the Minnesota Twins. Mm-hmm. Now, who would you take in that match? Twins. Same. And do you want to know why I would say that? It's because they're plus 22 run differential to the Yankees plus 14. And some people would say, well, what, what does that mean? What, what do you mean? That means not only can they score, but they're stopping teams from scoring as well. I'm mm-hmm. looking at this. Run scored 46 to the Yankees 45. So they're re- that's really close. But you got runs allowed 24 for the Twins and 31 for – you got a total of seven more runs allowed for the Yankees. So if, if you look at it that way, 
then in your mind, you should be able to say, okay, the Twins have the better defense. So if they both can go for each other bat for bat, it comes down to defense. So yeah. at this point, I would take the Twins. And it's crazy because beginning of the year, or bef- before this season even started, well, what were we seeing from ESPN and all these other big, fancy sports media companies that are saying, oh, this is going to be the World Series matchup. They would tell you it'd be the Yankees and the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. Oh, wouldn't that just so happen to be the two largest markets in baseball? (laughs) Imagine that. But I'm looking here at the Dodgers. Now, they have the best best run differential at plus 30. Okay. At plus 30. But last I checked, didn't they lose a series to the Padres? They're in second place, seven and three. I know they're in second place. The Rockies at six and two. Um Away, they're five and one. <laughs> Run differential plus thirty already. That's pretty good. Down back to minus twenty five uh, on that. Um, I mean, you, you kind of. I tell you what, Hunter, roll through those teams. You know, that's played at least six games or so. If they're still in the twenties in runs against, I think they're going to have a good chance. Uh, so that means Rockies, Dodgers, uh, Brewers only played six games. They're in their twenties. Getting this runs given up. You talking about they've played at least six games? Yeah, and they've only given up twenty something runs. How about I mean, the, the Nationals? How they say the Nationals? 22? They're at a plus of plus two. They've only scored twenty four. The Blue Jays have only given up twenty six, but they've only scored twenty five. So Blue Jays, Indians, and they're the opposite. Indians are twenty six and twenty five. They're plus one. So their pitching's doing well. Uh, they just need to hit the ball. So you know, break out the sticks. And uh, those teams, you know, sticks get hot. Hunter, that's one thing to look at. We talked before the season started that we thought the pitchers would be out in front of the hitters right now. Mm-hmm. And if you can stay with a winning record and your sticks had not got hot yet, you right. get halfway through the season, man, I'm telling you, those teams might, at some point, those sticks are going to get hot for five or six games and they'll go five I'm or six I'm just looking here, I'm going to tell you if, you, if you just go off of base runs, you know, who has the most runs scored, two hottest teams offensively are the Padres and the Braves. Yeah, Padres have 59 runs scored. Braves got 57. I tweeted this last night after their big win, or yesterday after their big win uh, against the Mets. Uh, to me, Atlanta might have the most explosive offense in baseball. You just don't know if their pitching is going to show up. <laughs> well, you've given up uh, 40 given up runs 40. in 10 games, so you're averaging four a game. Uh, for comparison, the Indians have only given up 25 in 10 games, so two and a half. Almost twice as less runs. I know. And what, what got you knocked out of the playoffs last year? Pitching. Hunter? <laughs> the pitching, seriously. If the pitching could ever come around to being consistent, because because yeah. I don't question our field players, I don't question the guys behind the play, behind the mound. It's the guy on the mound that I question. I only there are only two guys that I'm not really upset about. Uh, I'm talking about Freed and Soroka, our yeah. young guys. Uh, I like when they bring Sh- uh, Green in from the bullpen uh, as not quite just as a uh, uh, yeah just coming in for relief. He's not going to end the game, but. He'll come in in, in a few innings in the, here and there. I don't know. Just That's the big question mark. If they could ever get that solidified, yep. then Atlanta would have a real shot. I still give them a real shot to make it to at least the NLCS, just looking at the other teams out there. Uh, Chicago might be a tough tough draw. Uh, I can't say anything yet about your Cardinals or about you know Miami or all these teams that have only got to play three games yeah. yet because I don't, I don't know if how it's going to – Shake up well, as we go don't, along. Don't ever, if you ever, don't ever ask Dad for um, a Cardinals outlook. Mm-hmm. You've never met someone more pessimistic in your life. Like if you would think that they ain't, they ain't gonna make it, you would, you would think that Yadier had a losing record the last seventeen yeah. seasons. If you asked him, right, as opposed to only one losing season, and the, well, they've only had one losing season in the last seventeen years, Hunter, and they won seventy nine games, and then. Every if, if every time you see Calvin, it's, they're pitiful. They're, they're awful. pitiful. Like <laughs> you can't win them all hmm. first, <laughs> and and we've we've won two World Series in the past twenty years, I think. And then so like I don't I don't have that much to play about as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you've never seen your team win the World Series, so no, they had to do it just a year <laughs> before I was born. So so yeah, I mean I've seen them win. In fact, Hunter, I've been in the house on the last pitch of a World Series. I mean, what's so crazy is I've been alive and I've haven't seen any of my teams win a championship except the Tar Heels. Yeah, not only that's the only team was I in the house for the World Series, Hunter. The game. Let let me tell you real quick that story. Okay, so we have tickets. I've got them down the hall. Yeah, uh, of the of the championship they won against Detroit. Mm -hmm. We had tickets to Game Four. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Game Four. Uh, we drive out there. It's a ten-hour drive from here. Okay, we get there, and 
It's raining. Ooh. And it's raining. Yeah. And it's raining. You don't know if it's getting in. It didn't get in. Dang. Canceled. Oof. So we have dad, we have like we didn't plan to go yeah. and spend the weekend or anything. So we had work on the next day. So we were just gonna get up early and come back for work or whatever. So we still had to do that. And so they announced that what they're doing so is switching game four tickets with game five, five tickets. tickets. So, so you could everybody still go. who already had tickets to game five and had hotel rooms and plane tickets could still attend that game at that time yeah. with those tickets. But now it was called game, game four. four. So they pushed our tickets to game five. Cardinals win to, to push it. To, they, they go up 3-1 now. And so now we, we drive all the way home, wait a day, and, and then drive, drive all, all the way, way back. back. So we get there, and, and it's, it is, I'm talking, if I, I bring the pictures up, we are, I'm in my Appalachian State. Yeah. I'm going skiing gear. It's cold. It's, co- it's, it's, not, it's not like it's a nice, brisk evening. I'm talking, I've got my ski gear on. Mm. So I, I, I was, like, if they would have thrown some snow down, I, I could have got down to the home plate. If they yeah. <laughs> it's, it was cold. So uh, it was, and in that, game, in that game in particular, that's the famous bunt game. Where we bunted a thousand times and they couldn't get anybody out. Mm-mm. It was bunt, 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 and, and 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 you know we talk about the the new rule of the guy on second should just bunt him over. I I want to bring that up a little bit. Um, the Cardinals basically won that World Series bunting uh, on Detroit because they they had, they made an error hunter seventy five percent of the time when we bunted. It was just silly how bad they were at that. So so look, to finish up the story, the Cardinals win. Yeah. And it happens after midnight. Okay. Well, my birthday was the day after. Well, there you go. So at 1210, those St. Louis papers, dispatch papers are printed Uh with the date of my birthday. Nice. So on the streets of St. Louis, I was grabbing St. Louis dispatch papers with my birthday written on it, World Series champions. So we got a rain out, push back. They win the title. I'm in the house, which yeah. we, I, well, they wouldn't have if we were there for game four. They right. just went up 3-1. So I see them actually win the title. Yeah. I'm there for the celebration, and the damn papers have my birthday on them for, for it. So that's the best experience I've had as far as baseball goes. Right. By far. And uh, so I'm happy. Like, we, I have nothing else to like. Like, you right. know, when they say you win championships, you can't complain for like five years afterwards. I, I'm just, I can't. After that experience, I can't complain at all, really. Um, and uh, I've been a couple of times to to all uh, to to the previous Bush Stadium and this now and everything in the playoffs. I've seen him get beat in the playoffs. Uh, Carlos damn uh, Beltran, uh, just I don't know how many times he ripped our hearts out. Like you couldn't throw to him, Hunter. He knocked out of the damn park. I swear he took, he had his own traveling bat signal guy mm-hmm. when he, like the Astros did when we. And remember he was on the Astros signal mm-hmm. team, so it made you think like every time he come up to the plate. I mean he didn't like no, just not. You know, he might get a hit this. He smoked it. He, he was, was in Barry part, Bonds territory. He was part of their coaching staff, wasn't he? Yeah. Because he yes. went. He went. And tried he admitted to part of. The, he's part of the science team because mm-hmm. yeah. he was uh, going to go and be part of the manager, right. uh, the staff with the Mets. And when they found that out, they said, "Psych, yeah. not going to happen." Yeah. Yeah. I'm 100 percent on that wagon. You uh, think it was him? He was the ringleader. Oh God. He hit like 700, and <laughs> I'm telling you, you've never seen it. Was it was Bonds? Like you, you were sitting there thinking, like, why he is just on fire? Like we can't get him out. And 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 the, and the other thing, you know, I've mentioned before, like we never have left-handed pitching. Yeah, he's a he's a switchy. Mm. So we always had a right-hander on the mound, and he just hammered, hammered. it, hammered it. Uh, and, and yeah, I just I can't. When we got him, I thought it was. I told I was like, that's a guaranteed World Series. <laughs> and then he didn't do crap for us. <laughs> he killed us for years, and then didn't do crap. Because he didn't know how to steal any more no. signs. He just uh, knew the Cardinals. Yeah, so I'm, I, you know, I'm good with that. Uh, I think they'll be. I don't think they've got the best team. Obviously, they've got some weaknesses in hitting and weaknesses in pitching, but yeah. they're good enough to. They're good enough to win thirty games or thirty five. I think they're not gonna. I don't think they're gonna get in the forties. Maybe. Um, so Philip Russ, uh, you know, sent me a text. Part of me on on a tweet feed the other day about about baseball. Uh, if you, you know why. Or, you know, if you're getting a runner on the second, why don't you just bunt him over and then, mm-hmm. and then knock him in? Would you do it or would you not? And there's, 
a little back and forth from everybody on that. And, you know, Hunter, being from this area, I've seen bunts, and I just told you about bunts winning World Series. I've seen bunts win so many games in Legion, high school, whatever, every level, that if you're not doing that, you know, one of the coaches responded. A well-placed bunt. One of the coaches responded, Hunter. Uh, <laughs> I'll try to find it real quick. He said, <clears throat> let me get this right. Uh, it's like getting the ball first in football. Will a field goal be enough? If they don't score on the top, then I bun them over the bottom. And you've got three guys that need one hit. I'll take my chances. And another guy, that, that wasn't the, the big one. The other one said um, that he would uh, basically just, you, you just swing for it. What? Like, like come out like like if you want the he said if you want that no, let me find it if you want it uh he still third base and I'm just <laughs> like what <laughs> How, is he hiding Ricky Henderson on the bench I'm sorry like, why why would you not just make the whole defense work for it <laughs> instead of just having instead of enforcing the catcher to just make a great throw down the third baseline God where did it go I've I, I gotta, under, I gotta understand that. I don't think you understand if you go up there and you don't show bunt and you go down to bunt, what kind of disarray that's gonna send that defense if you got a guy on second. And especially with the extra innings rule where there's not already one out. So mm. it's like it's 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 a free it's a free bunt. The defense should just automatically play bunt as soon as that happens in extra innings. Why would you not? I, I why would you not? I, I, I don't mean know. All he has to do is lay that down maybe the first baseline if he wants to just sack. Well, anywhere really, but if he just wants to sack himself and ensure that the runner moves from second to third, why not? Think about it. You only got one out at that point. The next guy could come up and do the same shit. (laughs) Force the catcher to make a decision. And if the guy, as soon as he releases it from first or from home to first, you just send the guy from third home. If so, he's got it. So my math on a hunter. Why was, would you not? My math. On Aggressive. <laughs> Aggressive. Well, that that's what that coach want. Other coach want to do. He was saying be aggressive, but he was saying with was swinging. No. So, you so, run too many risks swinging at that point. I mean, the best thing that could happen to you is yeah, sure, your guy gets on first so, well, with a with a single and it moves the guy to third. It's but only what, one run you need. Dude. I know. Like, but what if and the thing is too is like, what if you put it to the shortstop? The second the guy on second can't even move and he throws your guy out at first. Now you're one out. You specifically, he said something about and this is this is the whole war thing. I think he specifically said he's not giving outs away. But th- that's the whole thing about Hunter. If a guy's on, oh, put it this way, it's if you're, situational. If you're in extra innings, mm-hmm. now th- this is kind of a, a, the the war kind of. This is situation. What you just said, situational hitting. You got a guy on first and third, mm-hmm. no outs. Yeah. And well, let's say nobody on third. Let's just say guys on on. Let's just say guys on third, no outs, and you got a batter up. And he now remember we're in extra innings, right? Yeah. And he walks. But that what does that do? If he hits the ground ball to second, what happens? Run scores. Mm-hmm. So you get out and a run scores or fly ball to right field and run scores, or you can walk and then the next guy, two guys strike out, it don't matter. Right. And and, and, and that's that's my point. You could do that too. It's, you, it is, you, you never know what the guy behind you take you's the Say do. you take the walk, the guy that you still had on second is still on second. <laughs> now, guess what? You're in a double play ball situation <laughs> if somebody hits right. the shortstop or do Because think all they have to do, they don't even have to throw over to first. No. They, they're forced, they'll just play the force play at third and swing it back over to second. I mean, if there's it's so stupid. If there's one out, that's different. Because you don't know if the guy's oh, yeah. gonna get it, if, he, if the guy's gonna either get the butt down or or, or what. But but it's a freebie. Or, or the guy. It, so they'll say, I don't want to give it out with one out, even though they move the guy third because I don't want to give mm-hmm. up an out. But either way, it seems to me the strategy in baseball has went from trying to make a play to hoping the guy behind you makes the play. Because at some point somebody's got to hit the ball mm-hmm. or, or or get this walk. So uh, do a little math on it. The best hitters in baseball, what do they hit? Three hundred. Now, three yeah. thirty at the uh, so that's what one every three. This bat. year it'll be four hundred. Well, let's say it's <laughs> three out of ten bats you get you get a hit, right? Yeah. So th- you got a thirty percent chance of getting hit. If there's a guy on second, no outs, 
And how many outs are in the end, Hunter? We can do this easily. <laughs> so you're hoping, by not bunting it over, that one of the three guys behind you, it will be his turn to get a hit. And if it's not a, not a good single or double, hope the next guy does too. So if you move the guy over to third, nobody needs to get a hit. Mm -mm. You can fly out to center, chop one to short, do whatever. You can do all kinds of things without getting that run in. But to hope that your guys knock it, knock the guy in from second, to me, it's to start off the innings. Or, or even if, they, if I'm in the bottom and I'm, it's tied up still, I'm bunting them over and be like, all right, we'll get the win here. You can squeeze, fly ball, you do all kinds of stuff. So with that math saying one, you got a one in three chance of getting a uh, get getting a hit. Mm -hmm. How about striking out the the goat best hitter in baseball? If Mike Trout strikeouts were a batting average, folks, it would be two fifty two. That means one in, the the best hitter in baseball strikes out one out of every four, four times. times. Yep. So if and his bat, his only real batting average is three hundred. So he's he's five percent better at at hitting the ball than striking out. So that's what you're hoping for, is that, A, he doesn't strike out because then nothing happens, but you mm. get it. What if the guy strikes out immediately? And then you're sitting over Well, just think about this, too. <laughs> so say, <laughs> so even then, so you got the guy on second, right? Right. You got him up there, and you're telling the batter, all right, let's go ahead and bunt. But what I want you to do, as soon as you get up there, I want you to show bunt so the defense has to shift. Well, think about it. You're pulling the first baseman down, and de depending on how they're thinking about this defense, well, you're going to pull the third baseman down, too. Why would you not tell the runner on second, just second, go regardless? Gallon's second, third baseman ain't moving. He's hugging it. Uh, the pitcher would be responsible for that, and a well-placed bunt down third baseline would, would be safe, would be a hit because— They'd get on first. Right. Uh, yeah, Hunter, I'm just, you know— There's just people, so many people, opportunities. People try to, do, try to outthink themselves and, and do— it. To, to the point. What it's is it? It's a, there, there are multiple probabilities that will happen from putting a bunt in that opportunity than to just sit there and maybe swing away. You got like, well, how do well, you feel every time? Got every more, time you've got more opportunities for a positive probability right. bunting Absolutely. the ball than swinging away in that position. Don't want to give away an out, but the mm. guy behind him has a one in four chance of striking out anyway, which means. He's got a 7 in 10 chance of getting out in any situation. And now we're just playing percentages. But they never look at it that way, do you? There's a, what, what if I said, Coach, there's a 75% chance your batter's about to get out on the next batter? Then that's that's a lot different than saying, oh, there's a 25% chance he's going to get a hit. That's 75% chance he's not going to get a hit. <laughs> the guy's going to be picking his nose. Know, it's just weird. It's just weird because then you're just playing the percentage game other than you got the balls or what. Like, <laughs> just do it. But, but this one person said that uh, they would still – if you want third base, just steal it, and then, and I'm like, oh, well, who? The e that's an easier throw for the catcher to just get it and in, in beam Major down League the third baseball, base who's still in third base. <laughs> I mean, nobody. <laughs> also, it might happen every now and then, but damn, it's not, like I said, well, hold on, Hunter, like, do you get to choose who no, you put on second? No, you okay. Don't. Well, I bet say unless you've got damn it's the, the Flash last, Gordon out there. That's what I'm saying. It's the last batter. I guess what you could do is do a sub, but who's got Ricky? Hen who's got Ricky Henderson sitting on the bench? They can steal third base in Major League Baseball. Like they, they want they're scared to steal second. Now we're talking about we're gonna steal third in, in extra innings, Hunter. That's ball. Think about it. Instead of just bunting the guy over, you're gonna attempt to steal your runner in scoring position. <laughs> and you gotta Put hope. Him in danger. And you gotta hope Put him in danger. that if the batter swings and misses, he's not in the way of the catcher trying to throw the ball Listen, or else it's interference. I used to steal so many bases and Third is very hard. I like to steal to Third second, is hard. I, you could get such a big lead to second and still not get there because it's such, it's 30 feet closer, basically, to home plate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I said it's the easier throw for it's the catcher. Hard. It's hard. We're going to steal it instead of bunting. <laughs> Especially if it's a right-handed <laughs> catcher. Dude, that's nothing. Well, the steal percentage like 50% in Major League Baseball, or, or it's not even that good either. <laughs> it's, not, it's terrible. Uh, if I, no, that's ballsy. <laughs> I, I just was saying, you know, some hey. Weird, some weird ideas on that one. I was like, hey, just show uh, show your cojones off a little bit. There you go. Hey, steal third. <laughs> steal third. You know what? This next one, steal home. That's how you lose to Cherubor Shelby in steal Legion, home. In Legion Ball, swinging away like just that. Just do it. Just, just do it. Hey, trust me. Trust <laughs> me. Steal home. Do it. <laughs> All right, any, you, you, hey, bet you won't, you won't do it. <laughs> Steal home, do it. I'm trying to think if I've seen anybody. I think we may have one or two guys that have done it. Um, now that dude, the, could you imagine just the balls on somebody? I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna steal home. 
Benny the Jet, dude. Some people can and do Sandlot. it. Sandlot. Yeah. <laughs> it's easier to steal a home at like the younger levels, though, because you don't know. The catcher might not be that great. The pitcher might put it in the dirt about every other pitch. And the 12 year old standing on third may be the size of a 16 year old. Who's, yeah, man, who, 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 uh, we had a, that's, that, that was one of the ones I was thinking about. We had a guy, we had a set of twins, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure he stole home because, like, number one, he was fast as all could be. He's yeah. a really good baseball player, too. One of them. Well, both of them were. One of them was exceptional. Man child. And then, yeah. Oh, he was bigger and stronger than all the coaches. Like, they they, they thought he was a coach or mm. where we went. And, like, no, he's 13. <laughs> 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 or he's 12. <laughs> Benching 250 over here. Whatever it is, just throwing everybody around. Um, yeah, home's way different. Uh, that, that was just wild to me that the coach said, I, would, I think we could steal third better than just <laughs> And bunny him over. Golly. Uh, any more on the baseball front right now, Hunter? Um, nothing on the baseball front right now still other than it looks like they're just going to continue on. And uh, But, you know, Commissioner did come out and say, we got to tighten this up. Uh, we got we got to get a little bit of a control over this so it's not a, a mass outbreak amongst teams, uh, which I can understand that. You really don't want that. Um, but other than that, Looks like baseball's still going to continue going, and I'm just happy to see Atlanta's winning right now. I was, I was very skeptical at first. I was really skeptical when I saw Acuna leading the league with strikeouts, but seems like everybody's starting to pick it up a little bit. And Dansby Swanson <laughs> leading the National League in hits. I did forget so. something. I got a little bit more baseball to talk about. Uh, this, Go ahead. This is the ESPN preseason current rankings. Preseason current. Preseason rankings. and current after ten oh, games oh, if oh. they've adjusted. Okay. So they still have. Preseason ranking one Dodgers, and they still got him as, as number one, and they're in second place in their division. I mean, they do have the best. You said it earlier. They do have the best difference. Earlier, you but. said Dodgers and Yankees, one and two on this list. Dodgers and Yankees. Is it? Imagine it's got that. Yankees preseason still number two now. Then it's got Twins at three. They were preseason five. You mentioned them. Houston at four. They were no, preseason. Ain't no way. They're preseason number four. Tap at five right now. I can understand that. Had them at preseason three. Braves at six, preseason six. It says, despite the record, it's been an uneven start for the Braves with Acuna's strikeout binge. A troubling concern. Soraka and Freed of both. Is it Fried or Freed? Freed. Well, it's spelled Fried. I know it is. Soroka and Fried have both made good starts, but the Braves are trying to figure out the rest of the rotation with Fulty so bad in his one outing that he was designated for assignment and returned to the team's alternate training site to find his velocity. Marcakis opts back in, though, so you, mm-hmm. you got a we got a, hit you got a bat back. You lost Puig. You had Puig. You lost Puig. Because we lost, lost Marcakis, 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 but now we have Marcakis. Maybe that's why they cut him. They, the, he had been talking about coming back, maybe, and they were just like, oh, I, I don't know. know. Indians were preseason nine. They're at seven right now. It says, we know going in that Cleveland would have to rely on a starting rotation. I hope to scrape out enough offense, and there has been no change in that assessment. Justin Bieber has been the best starter in the majors through two starts with no runs allowed in 27 Ks. Uh, let's see, tying Spooner's MLB record of Ks through two appearances. Plezak had an impressive first start with 11 Ks and no runs. Rotation will make the Indians a playoff team, but they'll need more than Lindor, Ramirez, and Santana to make a large. I think Ramirez is killing the ball right now, ain't he? I thought I he was one so. of the top hitters. Uh, but I guess he's not getting any help right now. Is that is that what the issue is for the offense? They've only got 26 runs. Who is it? Uh, the Indians. I guess. Jose Ramirez right now is batting 333. Oh, this is what I saw. He had. Let's see, doubles. He's been he's been hitting. I I, I was looking at this last night on that. I didn't just lost Jose Ramirez. There he is third base, batting 233. He's got. Crap, I lost him again. I think it was one of that. Uh, Marojas has got the best war right now, but he hadn't, hadn't even played. Uh, doubles leaders, Iglesias, Contreras, Walker, and Mookie Betts. I'll have five right now. How about Iglesias in Baltimore, Hunter? He's got ten hits and five of them are doubles. Swinging the bat, boys. Listen, that's probably the only bright side to Baltimore right now. Contreras has nine hits and five of them are doubles. <laughs> How about Justin Turner? Has, oh, never mind. That was five runs. He's got 11 hits and four doubles. I was about to say, wow, he's got nothing but doubles or red that backers. Home runs, of course. Uh, in 10 games, the leaders, Aaron Judge at six, Moran five in Pittsburgh. And um, 
so there's some of your leaders. Uh, Nationals eight, uh, no, Nationals nine. A Oakland eight. Nationals ninth. Cubs ten. Padres eleven. Brewers twelve. Cardinals down in thirteenth right now. Just talk about the limited number of games. Can't really yeah. say anything. The preseason rank was twelve. They moved them back. Uh, and just mentioned the same thing I said. Swanson must have just got passed uh, for National League hit leader because it looks like um, Kyle. Uh, no. This is a uh, Seattle's not so San Francisco Solano is now at 15, so he's only down by one. Most hits: Kyle Lewis, Solano, Alberto Brantley, and Swanson and Fletcher mm-hmm. are your top, basically six. Uh, Where's that seven? One, two, three. Six, That's stolen six, bases. Look, we just batters. talked about that. Tom, there's only been five. That's the most stolen bases right now. It's five. Dansby Swanson's got three. <laughs> Dude's uh, Dan- balling, huh? Dude, I'm telling you, Swanson right now is looking <laughs> really good. He's one. Two, he's on three, three of these offensive uh, leader stats. He's with RBIs, which is what you like to see. Yeah. You like to see hits. Yeah. And I guess, I mean, they don't want really to talk about it, but you like to see stolen bases too. So, I mean, he's out here getting a damn thing. You like to see it. But I will say this. You know, that's what they said for years. They thought Dansby Swanson was going to be. People forget Dansby Swanson was the highest pick for the Braves years ago. He was, that was, this, this is what. Everybody thought he was going to be. So now that he's doing it in a shorter season, whatever, I'm fine with it. If we could come out and we can get a top a one or two seed if he continues to ball out like this. Angels, 19th. Oh. Uh, haven't had their full lineup together. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. They had the Angels 19th out of a total of 30 teams. Right, Excuse currently me. Currently, right now, yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, Don't, aren't they seven. three and seven? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, they got them 19th. Well, you know why. Uh, says the bullpen is an issue, mm. and you wonder how long Madden will stick with Pujols, who just hit a grand slam and basically about won the game if the if the, if the pitchers would have came through there. At Are the these end. analytics guys writing? Yes. This? Oh, who imagine. else will be writing this? Bitching a player for his stature is no easy, so it's it's Pujols' fault. They're three and seven, Hunter. Oh. Is of all the people on that roster, that is, is it. Now? <laughs> now. Oh, it says, can the Angels scratch out a 500 season and make the playoffs? Sure. Sure, but the I mean, just show positive about that. Has he? He's been what five hundred once in his career, Trout. <laughs> he's made the playoffs once, didn't win a game. So. Sure, but this club hardly looks like a threat to the best teams in the American League. Well, yeah, okay, that's what. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> so there's your baseball, baseball minute impressions. Well, it's been more than a minute. It has been more of a minute than uh, you got. But, any, uh, you got any more? Anything no, else I would on? just say that. Um, I'm confident, though, that Atlanta really has a shot this year to make a World Series. If it comes down to two best teams out of the National League, to me, it is the Dodgers and the Braves right now. That would just be the NLCS, and I guess I would have to give the Dodgers the edge right now, but, I mean, I'll still believe in the Braves, but it's only the only difference is pitching. That's it. I think we could outbat them, seriously, but pitching. There's a reason why the Dodgers have a damn plus 30 run differential. Okay, that, that pitching is, is a beast. Um, but I think uh, because they lost a few early games to the Padres, and I think we could beat the Padres. So, well, Cards aren't scared of Braves or the Dodgers. We've got Kershaw's number. Well, the way this, yeah, well, I'm not worried about him. Kershaw at all. just made his debut too. Yeah, he didn't pitch the opening <sighs> game like he was supposed to. Anyway, it's got a a dumbass goofy wind up like that. I don't. I don't think you you can be called. If you can the hit. The, you if, you, if you can the hit the a curveball, you can. You, you can can't get, be called. You the can best get his pitcher. number because that's. That's what Kershaw's been known for for years is his curveball. But if you can hit it, then you've got him. So I'm looking at the Angels stats about how bad. I don't know how his mental is either if it comes playoff time because it's always been in the in back of his mind that everybody said he just can't win. And it's true. Like, he finally got, what, his first playoff win last year? Mm. So, I don't know. Pujols, uh, five RBIs. Um, Mike Trout has only played in six. Six games. Yeah, Hunter. I think they said he's only going. He's going to return to his team tomorrow because uh, his wife just had a baby. He's got. <laughs> he's only. He's only played six of the ten games. He's got more strikeouts than everybody but Upton and Otani <laughs> on his team. <laughs> yes, he's only played half the games and he's got more strikeouts than everybody but Otani and, and Upton. Upton's what's, played all the games. What's the BA right now? Uh, two ninety two. Hmm. I mean, yeah, whatever. One double from from Trout. One double. One double. That's it. 
I hmm. know he's only played six games, but in one home run and one double, four RBIs, eleven total bases. But let's cut Pujols, which who is now two home runs away from Willie Mays. We talked a little bit about that before the season started. How you know of of all the people this really affects, no matter about how bad you think he's playing or whatever, it affects his all time home run chase more than anybody. Mm-hmm. And really, I think he's got a lot better chance to be the all time RBI leader than he does the home run. Um, but he's got a chance at both, and this short season is 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 going to kill him on that. So. He's also, I, I was reading about, he can't just go back to St. Louis if they want. He, he's got, part of his contract is like a, is a, yeah. is a work after a retirement contract with them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'm not exactly sure the wording on that. But. I'll tell you this, the Braves. If you ask me right now, who would be the most valuable player on the Braves? It's either going to be Dansby Swanson or Ozuna. Ozuna is balling. I, t- I told out. you the dude. Oh, he is he's, balling he, out. He'll do eleven some, hits. He'll do some weird and dumb things. But he three plays, home runs, he plays six hard. RBIs, and then I look up here at Acuna and I'm like, "Come on, dude, come <laughs> on! You got one home run. You're batting 195. The, the swing. You got 18 the, strikeouts. The swinging and the miss is uh 18 strikeouts. It's, it's concerning. Oh, man. All right, it's NBA tough. action. Yeah. Uh, they, Did you watch any of the games? No. Yeah. I don't have cable. Ah, understandable. So, no, I, what I'm going to end up doing is watching them online somehow once the playoffs start to come up here and watch the important mm-hmm. ones. Um, I'm not watching preseason basketball, which is what this <laughs> is, um, because... Well, uh, so then are you going to call Are you gonna call Saturday night's game just a preseason game? What game? When the Raptors beat the Lakers? Yeah. That's just a preseason but game. But I do want to say... Kyle, Kyle Lowry is a baller. And people underestimate him so much. Uh, They're winning right now. All he does is win. I know. I saw it. All he does is win. All Kyle Lowry ever does is win basketball games. And, folks, you can have your Russell Westbrooks. You can have your other flashy point guards, your Dame Lillers and whoever. That dude wins. He does win. And, and Even with DeMar DeRozan while he was there, and they had, um, what's his name, Larry, their coach, his son played Larry Drew. Oh, when yeah. Larry Drew was their coach, they were still winning there. So what do you? I mean, I was gonna say his son played at Carolina for like a year or two, and so, then transferred because he wasn't too good. What was his name? Frank. Larry Drew Jr. <laughs> Larry Drew, yeah, Jr. <laughs> I was like, okay, so it's Larry, his dad's Larry Drew. There we go. There we go. Uh, he uh, basically what Larry is, Hunter, is the quintessential. If you're thinking football, um, what is it? The the carry of the team, the Trent Dilfers, the. Oh, he does. He does just enough. Game manager. It, there you go. He's a game manager. He's. Um, I'll say this, and people are gonna go crazy. You could consider him a poor man's, but even poor man's is kind of mean to say. But a poor man's Chris Paul. Mm-hmm. He's a floor general. Right. I mean, he can score. Don't get he's me wrong. He's won way more than Chris Paul too. He has won a lot more than Chris <laughs> Paul. He's got a ring, and Chris yeah. Paul doesn't. Chris Paul ain't never won the finals. And I was listening to him the other day because you know Chris Paul is the NBA Players Association president. He's the oh. he's the president yeah. for them. Uh, or not? Maybe not the player. Yeah, it is the Players Association. Yeah, yeah. So he was the one that was helping on the players' side get all of this figured out, the bubble and everything. So he he's had his hands really tied up this off season. And but but they were talking, I think Mark Jackson and somebody else said, you know, regardless of that, like he's a first ballot Hall of Famer, Chris Paul. And I'm sitting I'm thinking, yeah, well, true, a lot of people would say that. He is. But then you just bring up but Kyle Lowry has won more and he's got a ring, but a lot of people will say, Oh well he only has that because of Kawhi but I'm sitting here thinking, Well it could is Kyle Lowry a first ballot Hall is of Famer? Is he the Eli Manning of basketball? You know what? That is a great. That's a great comparison. Yeah, is Kyle Lowry the Eli Manning of basketball? He's a winner, but he's not. He's not the. He's, he's not, not flashy. The flashy. He's not Russell Russell Westbrook. He's not Steph. He's not Dane. Now Steph wins. Steph um, does win. But but some of these other guys. Dame wins. They get all the credit. Least. It's also he's not. He's Lowry. Let's be honest. Isn't the most physically. He's a hot dog. Fit. He's a hot uh, dog. Person ever. Yeah, he's a hot dog. He is a hot dog or he yeah. eats hot dogs? Both. <laughs> that's He's a hot dog. <laughs> kind of like, that? see, that's what I call people that in the NBA, and I, I'm not, it ain't, no, it ain't body shaming because I know how super athletic they are, but they don't, they don't look athletic. Right. Kind of like Carmelo when he went to the Knicks. He didn't look athletic, now but the brother, can, now he's skinny male. <laughs> when they don't, they're not really cut and they don't look super athletic, they're, they're a hot dog. Listen, I, 
Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with being a hot dog. Interviewing, hot dogs are delicious. Interviewing the guys at the <laughs> All-Star game. Even then, yeah. they had Kyle Lowry. So you understand how a basketball court works. It's a big rectangle. Yeah. So they had LeBron and and Giannis and, and all those guys kind of say in the – like if you had a court and a square on the long end of the mm-hmm. rectangle, and they had Kyle Lowry – on the ass end of the rectangle, the, the small end. So mm-hmm. he's sitting there for like another guy, and there's nobody talking to him. Like it's just one. Like you could easily, I could have talked to Kyle Lowry the whole time, the whole time. if I wanted to. Yeah. And, and they met. There was like three or four people walked up, but I asked him a few questions about Danny Green and some other things. And he's real. Kyle was one of the nicest people, just talking to. Mm-hmm. And he seemed he seemed like so down to earth, like. Like he was talking to me like a person hunter, not like mm-hmm. you're just a reporter. reporter. And yeah, you yeah. know how some of these guys ha- how they yeah, are, yeah, yeah. And, and some people judge. That's you. how I felt with some of the players that I got to speak to at Super Bowl week. Some of them they treat you like you're just a person. They didn't right. treat you like you were a reporter. It was like, yeah, man, you know, I just talked to you like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just cu- shoot, shooting the shit. Really. I love it. I love it when the guys talk. And, and but I understand some of the stars they get treated differently by the press and certain other people. But if they would talk to the local people it, like like us or whatever and. Well, we're I'm just. Not, dudes. I'm not here to ruin your day. No, or, we're just dudes. We just. We just want a story. I'm. I'm happy to be here, and and Kyle right. was extremely nice. I even talked to Danny Green in the locker room for Toronto when, after that, and he mm-hmm. was extremely nice. Um, so I, all those, I, I just can't say enough good stuff about Lowry right now. I don't whether think basketball I, or, or or how he treats people and talks to people. I don't think year. I got the opportunity to speak to Kyle yeah. last year because I don't I, think he. Ta- I don't think he talked. Last year, remember they only let it was because Ka- Kawhi was there, and we were trying mm-hmm. to talk to Kawhi. And I talked, and, and then, I got Kawhi, right? But I don't, think, I didn't get anybody else. I, they're always sure on that time limit. They got to get to the bus and right. whatnot. So I, I snuck over there and talked to and talked to Danny when nobody else was talking to him, and everything, yeah. and asked him about the Carolina basketball um, kids program that he deals with, and, and that I went to, and that that was a good art. I, I I would bet that Danny's never been asked what I was asking about. Probably not, and and I bet I I I would hope maybe he might remember me because it was a, a regular hey how are you doing thanks mm-hmm. for talking to me type of interview like like you said talk we're talking to each other like men and not I still can't believe that I did reporter. that though I talked to Kawhi Leonard and I asked him if they were getting ready for the playoffs and if they were taking these like day by day or if they were using this to to get everything fine tuned and ready because they had just lost to the Hornets that mm-hmm. night they lost on a buzzer beater mm-hmm. Kawhi missed it he hits that shot later yeah. against Philadelphia we, I should have fired you for that. Why? Because you're talking to Kawhi Leonard, right? Right. You got one job. Make him laugh. He did. <laughs> I wanted to hear. He did. <laughs> no, no, he didn't. No, he didn't do that. You, had, no. you, had, you no, I don't know. We should have just brainstormed. Like, you, I don't, don't even ask him a question. Tell him a joke. Like no, a, like a dad joke and see if he laughs but, at it. Like, I think I he just, laughing at a dad just, joke. Uh, He's the type of person that laughs at a dad, at a dad joke. joke. Board, board, but I'll tell you what. A board man got paid, and I, I will take 110% responsibility for that run that the Toronto <laughs> Raptors had. Because I asked him, I said, y'all getting ready for this? I still have the interview on my phone. I said, you just taking these one at a day or one at a time? Or are you still using this opportunity to get yourselves uh, in playoff contention? He said, well, you know, I can't quite, can't quite remember exactly what he said, but... Essentially, he said, we're still trying to get it fine-tuned and ready for the playoffs. And guess what? They go on to win the TAM championship. Yeah. So I talked to eventual NBA in, sec, was that the second championship that he's won. Yeah, that was a, yeah, that was the second. Because he won one with San Antonio. He won and one or two in San Antonio. He won one. Okay. Because he was the MVP of that one. And he got finals MVP for this one as well uh, with Toronto. And that's what a lot of people are saying, too, is... How hard is it going to be to keep Kawhi's name out of, you know, the pantheons as his career continues? If, if they he, win. If, if the Clippers win and if he gets a third finals MVP on a different team. I, now, I'm going to say this because this is still obviously basketball. We're still on the basketball topic. I know we're talking about what it was last year. But I watched the Clippers play. I missed their first game against the Lakers. I was busy. I didn't get to watch it. But it, the Lakers, the Clippers didn't have Montrez Harrell. They didn't have Lou Williams, and they didn't have somebody else as a key uh, component to their rotation. And they only lost to the Lakers by two. And Paul George had a hell of a game. And then they come out and play the Pelicans. And I don't know if Montrez or Lou Williams was back yet or not, but they that was a dog walk. They beat them by like twenty six. Yeah, they did. I mean, that, it wasn't even close. And so, and guess who else had another big game? Paul George. Mm-hmm. So to me, 
I they've been saying this about the Lakers. You know, if the Lakers are going to win, it's going to be on the back of Anthony Davis. I think if the Clippers are going to win, it's going to be on the back of Paul George. What a lot of people don't remember is Paul George used to be a thorn in LeBron James's side with those Indiana Pacer teams when yeah. LeBron was first with the Cavs and then when he went on to go and play with the Heat. I'm not saying that Paul George was consistently beating LeBron. I'm just saying he was a pain in LeBron's ass because Paul George, he's so big. People forget, Paul George is like 6'10", 6'11". Okay, he's not, he, he hit a growth spurt while he was in the NBA. So he is big, and he can has the handles of a guard at the forward position. He can shoot the three, and he might be, this is very, as I know this is outlandish, he might be a better defender than Kawhi. He might be. So if Paul George can get it together, that's always been the knock on him, though, is playoff Paul George just isn't always there. He's not always dialed in. I don't know if he if he's not quite ready for the big lights. Well, now he's not having to be the guy that carries the team. Yeah, he can lean a little bit on Kawhi right now. So to me, if they have the best wings easily, in basketball, I think they do easily. And, and we talk about that all the time. And well, the best game, wing, the best wing tandem. Yeah, there wings. might be Giannis might be better than both of them, but yeah, you know, like just those yeah. two together, wings, absolutely. As in plural, yes. yes. Um. You know, they're, they're sitting there in second. Um, two games ahead of Denver. Uh, I just don't know how serious these teams are taking these 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 games because mm-hmm. there is no home court. Um, as far as I can tell, there's no there's no reason one one team would be favored if they were the home team in a matchup. I, I'm excited about the about this Hunter because uh, a lot of times in the NBA in the playoffs, whoever's at home wins by twenty. Yeah, in the first four games, and I, I I've never understood like you couldn't do that. I don't think on a football field, and, and there's a reason baseball and basketball play series and football doesn't. But just the fact of like, it, uh, you don't play how many times you know in football they'll be like the hardest thing to do is beat a team three times, mm-hmm. and then and it, especially it, if you see them twice <laughs> then in the playoffs, right? So what it's I'm hard to just is, beat them twice, like. <sighs> Having not having home court, like I th- won't the games be closer more than likely because there is no refs aren't getting swung by the fans. That's one I thing so. I think that happens is the refs get swung by the fans. That so much. or you know I can't remember I was listening to it was one of the bar stool podcasts and they had the old ref that came on there mm-hmm. that got suspended and and or basically excommunicated from the league because right. he was f- fixing games and he said you don't know how many times like it happened we got a call said hey we need this to go one more game. Yeah, because I believed all that. I, I I do. It's easy in basketball mm-hmm. because this is what this is how it is, Hunter. Um, let's say your team goes to goes takes it to the hole, and you shoot and you call you call a foul for an and one. Mm-hmm. Well, the other team comes down, you call a foul away from the ball. Yeah. So you could have ten fouls for free throws and ten fouls on the other team and not, not make being, any free throws. Yeah, not shooting at all. And so there there's ways to manipulate it in basketball that I always thought, man. Something's weird as far as the spreads and the gambling, especially them. Like I just don't understand how you can beat a team by twenty. I I don't I don't remember ever in any of our high school games just stomping a team and then they stomp us. Like unless mm-hmm. something like unless just you just have a very cold night. You remember Carolina in the Final Four that year? They only scored like twenty point, whatever it was. They got blown out by was it Kentucky or somebody? They yeah, looked so it was a good bad game. Just then just shit to bed. Yeah. Unless that happens, that don't happen. You know, it just it's just weird how that happens, and I just don't. I, I think we're gonna have more competitiveness once the basketball, once the playoffs start. I think it's gonna be fun in the. Playoffs. I think we're still gonna have a few competitive games. Uh, I watched the Celtics Blazers game. The when the night. West Hunter, you've got three. That's what I'm saying. You got six teams fighting for one spot. Yeah, and in the East, it's three teams fighting for one. So you'll see some competitive games. I know that the Mavericks just clinched a playoff spot. Yeah. They're set in stone there as the. They ended a three-year drought. Uh, yeah. That's one of the big things that was uh, a headline right now. But I'm, I'm going to say this. So the Trailblazers lost to the Celtics, okay? But the Trailblazers had a ton of opportunities late to win that game. Uh, Celtics just ended up making a good few defensive stops. And do you want to know why the Portland Trailblazers had a great opportunity to win this game? Gaston is Hassan Whiteside? No. No. Uh, it is that fact that Nurkic... Dropped 30. <laughs> Nurkic and Damian Lillard both dropped 30. Damian Lillard was 30 and 16. He had 16 assists. 
And I think because we got another game tonight. We got a game tonight at six thirty. There's gonna like be, five games. Tonight. There are a bunch of games, but there's a game at six thirty that, okay. that that's gonna really impact if the Trailblazers get in or not. And this, the Pelicans are playing against Memphis. Now, say the Pelicans for some reason. So far, they've lost their first two games. They're not trying to get in. I don't. Well, they're not with Zion not. being on minutes restriction. They're, which it's not is even dumb that. as shit. Zion, there's even a story Zion said it's hard to watch losses on minutes restrictions. And I get, I believe it because he probably wants to go out there and give it everything he's got. It's not only that they're on minutes restriction. It's it's, it's they're saying he's not playing the end of quarters. Oh, yeah. So, so at how end of, dumb like, last is that? Two, two minutes, 30 seconds. So if I'm him, I'm like, if you're going to play me eight minutes, play me the last two minutes of every quarter then. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can easily fix this. Not By them saying he's not playing the last minute, two minutes of the game, like – you're not trying to win a ball game. Last two minutes, you put your best players on the floor and you're going. It's and, and to say that's which that's is so what we're which doing. is so dumb to me because I'm telling you, if the Pelicans decided, okay, we are going to try and win, I think the Pelicans would have a great shot of beating Memphis tonight. I'm not going to say it's 100. percent I'm not. They'll, they'd have a great shot. Yeah, I think and if they solid and if they up. beat Memphis, then that's just another game up that they Portland can have. It's yeah. just tough, man, because. Portland is in between two teams right now. They're, the Pelicans are right behind them, and the Grizzlies are right in front of them. And either one of those teams could get hot. if they, Well, especially, well, not the Pelicans now if they're definitely not trying to win. So the only team that they have to worry about slipping up is the Grizzlies. That's it. Yeah. And, the, and just Portland can't afford to lose more than four games. They've played how many? Two? Yeah, they played two, and they're so they one and one. Games I think I think Portland's one and one. And they're like three games back. Hold on, I'm pulling up. I had the standings and I backed out of them. Um, Portland's got to go win like six of these eight games to have a chance, and, and then Port- the Memphis got about say, to go four and four. And Portland's they don't have an easy schedule. They really don't. I they really don't. I I hate to say it, but the Trailblazers might have got gypped. Well, think about and you know, no none of us actually went to to look at that. Like their next game, they won first their first game against the Grizzlies. That's a difficult. That's a playoff team, so we can say that's a difficult. They lost to the Celtics, who arguably could be one of the teams in the Eastern Conference Finals. Mm-hmm. They play the Rockets next. Mm-hmm. That, that, that shit ain't easy. Well, think about this, Hunter. You've kicked out by, by saying all the teams aren't playing. Mm-hmm. You've changed the regular season to where you're not – like some of these you teams might, you still don't have, have nights that's a guaranteed like, win. What if Portland's last five games were against Cleveland, Atlanta, Detroit, New York, and Chicago? You've, yeah, you've and now you've got them instead playing against – all teams that are in the playoffs, contenders. Can, you've got them playing contenders. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you could have easily. We don't. I mean, I don't know, but but some of those teams would have been playing uh, teams like that. I'm sure a lot of teams would have loved to play the Hornets and Bulls and and everybody else as they went through. All right, uh, Hunter, I want to say you're half right about something. What am I half right about? And oh, did you see my tweet? No, I don't know. No, not oh, that. Dang it! I mind. saw your tweets. Uh, but this oh. is something else. This is something you said on the show that you're half right about. Okay. Um, you've been saying it for a couple of days, and 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 it I didn't it didn't kick in until I realized exactly what was happening. Um, that about Bobo's minutes being limited, mm-hmm. and two there's two things that make that true right now. This is preseason; they're already in. There is no point in him running out there and banging against these people right, right. now. When the games don't matter at all. True. Now, and 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 the way I'll prove that theory that I think is right, that had two players that didn't play the other day. Who was it? Was, it was who Denver? Yeah, Murray. And, they had three technically, yeah. but the two that that's I said it when on my tweets. That's why I thought you were, were referencing my tweets. It's like they got beat. Denver got beat because they couldn't hit three point shooting, and their two best three pointers and three point shooters and starters didn't play. Murray Jamal Murray Harris. had a tight hamstring, and Gary Harris was a late show to the bubble. Yeah, so he's still technically, I guess, quarantining or or however long he has to be out. So, yeah, I mean that's that's it. They didn't have two starters play, and they lost by twenty. And I want you to know that Jamal Murray can drop twenty himself. And uh, Gary it's Harris not showing can, who was injured on the, in that game. Mm-mm. Um, it looks like uh, Miami had a full slate. They played eleven players. <laughs> so yeah, and and how many <laughs> times is Kelly Olynyk going to come out there and drop eighteen and a quarter? So I'm going to read some of these minutes for some of these people. You can tell me if this is going to happen in playoffs. Tory Craig from South Carolina Upstate started and played twenty eight minutes. He won't play twenty eight minutes <laughs> because what they had him at the point guard or shooting guard. Small forward. Small, yeah, yes, but say the. He might though. I don't know. 
Because I don't know who their true small forward is, unless they go with Michael Porter Jr. Um, they started Monte Morris at the shooting guard. I mean, no, point that's, guard. That's, that'll be Jamal Murray. He spot. played 28 minutes. So give those 28 minutes to Jamal Murray, as okay. long as his hamstring doesn't right. tighten up. Um, then, well, Gary Harris plays shooting guard, mm-hmm. so he probably just plays for Craig. Craig and Morris. We're playing basically for for Jamal Murray Perry and, and, and and they've got Harris. a combined fifty six minutes. I'm telling you. So now now I'm gonna go down the rest of them. A Plumley brother, Miles, got 16 is it Miles minutes. or Mason? I, I can't remember. It doesn't matter. He's awful. Uh, he did okay. Harvey Gant Grant's not Gant. He's a politician. Harvey Grant is the sorry Grant brother. Not Hor- Horace is the good Grant brother. Mm-hmm. Harvey's his twin who went to Clemson and was okay. And uh, his son played. His son played. No, tw- I thought that was Horace's son. That's not his Horace's nephew. Is it's, it? It's Harvey's son, yeah. Jeremy played. He played 26 minutes off he the bench. He scored a lot, though. He had, like, what, 16, 18 on the night? 19. 19. Yeah, he played pretty good, Troy though. Daniels got 20 minutes. <laughs> and Dozier, whoever Dozier is, he got 16 minutes. So a Plumley, Dozier, Troy Daniels. I'll skip Grant. He played well. Dozier Daniels. I think they said it's a contract season for him, too, so he okay. might be playing for a contract. Plumley, Morris, and Craig, mm-hmm. five people all played way more minutes than Bobo Bo did mm-hmm. that are just not as good of ball players as Bobo. Bo. So what I'm thinking, Hunter, is you're, you're right on the minutes thing maybe here in the preseason, but once the games count, <laughs> he's playing. Uh, I think he'll see. Mate, how many minutes did he? He play? only got twelve. He was averaging eighteen before this in the in the. In the I think. In the I warm-ups. think. I think he gets fifteen minutes a night, mostly because I know it's thunder and I think they're calling for storms. Um, I think he gets fifteen a night when it comes down to it, and the reason why I think in the regular season you're right, but I don't think in the once the postseason starts. In the postseason, what you do in basketball, you play eight, and then go from there. Okay, well then eight. Because he's, he's definitely I, in the top eight. Because I'll say this: mm. Cause you're gonna, cause I you're don't gonna, know if he gets as many minutes as you think. Because when I'm serious, when I watched him against Miami, he looked overwhelmed. They're not gonna play twenty hundred. Okay. Now I'm not. Now you're right. I'm not saying he, that's why they're I'm not saying, playing Troy Daniels twenty and no, no, no. 16. That's what I'm saying. He'll he could be it maybe between twelve to fifteen so he minutes. Had, he had five points just for his size alone. He had five points and four rebounds. His size 12, alone in twelve minutes. So if you double that, he in well, twenty four minutes. What's sitting at right at now? The three seed. Yeah. Who would they pull right now if it ended right now? Uh, Denver would be getting the Oklahoma City Thunder. I'd use him size wise just on Stephen Adams. <laughs> I'd use him just size wise on Stephen Adams. No, no, no. I don't want him nowhere near him. No. <laughs> I don't want no elbows near ball no. ball. Well, he might crack a rib. I'm telling you. Something. I, seriously, that's why I said he looked. <laughs> He's a small oh, he looks. He looked overwhelmed. He's a small man. And they threw the ball to him, and he he fumbled it around. I think his you nerves. Didn't see how, you didn't see that almost full court bounce pass to the I other did. seven footer. I Listen, did. As but a, I also saw N- Jokic throw that kind of pass too. Right. Exactly. So he's good as Jokic. No. What I'm saying is, no. if you got two seven footers willing to throw bounce passes mm-hmm. on a full court fast break, that makes me as a basketball Kevin, fan. He's a year. Just, I think he's melt. a year out. Just Hunter, I'm Listen. not. Again, this is the Appalachian State argument. I'm not arguing he's the best player on the team. I know. I'm arguing. But put the dude in for 20 minutes. Good things not are going to happen. 20 minutes. I'm telling you, maybe 15. <laughs> I'm telling you, 15 because who are you going to? You play Troy Daniels and PJ Dozier and Mercury Morris and a kid from South Carolina Upstate. He played good. A kid from South Carolina Upstate. He played good. Over Bobo. John Morant played at Murray State. So (laughs) Damian Lillard played at Weber State or Weber State, however they want to say it. South Carolina. Is it Weber or Weber? Is it Weber or Weber? Oh, God. They're weebs. Is that the ones that beat Carolina or Duke? They beat one of them in who? Didn't we? we State, uh, yeah, State, yeah, Carolina, we, Duke? yeah, yeah. They beat Duke, and then I think the next year was when they lost to um, not Loyola. Who was it? Oh my God! It was Lehigh, Then they lost to Lehigh the next year. <laughs> yeah, because people were saying how high? Lehigh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm. Uh, I wanted to go. Back. I will say this though, I totally buried. Indiana as being a team to watch in the East. Yeah. And then TJ Warren had to go out and drop 53. Oh, the depot's back. 
He is? Yes. I didn't think he was playing. No, he's back. I thought he... He played. Well, then absolutely <laughs> he played. Indiana I thought that's where you were going. You no, went no, no, T.J. No. Ward. I'm like, no. no, no I, this back. whole time I thought... Because I thought Oladipo was not going to play because he <laughs> wanted to no, he's obviously back. go back to uh, his... Make sure that his rehab was 100%. He's about to put 40 on Washington tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, yes. One of them is. TJ Warren, I'm telling you now, the hardest thing is that Sabonis is not playing for them. Speaking of Sabonis. That's tough. I'm glad you brought that name up. That is Nikola Jokic. Sabonis. Or his dad. Or his daddy. Yes. Uh, what we're getting, what you're seeing, folks, ladies and gentlemen, they used to talk about all the time how we got robbed of seeing Arvidas play uh, in America during his prime. And and that is exactly you watch the, you watch the Joker play, uh, Nikola Jokic in Denver, and that the passes he's playing point forward, mm-hmm. he's, he's dunking. That's that is Arvita Sabonis, and, and man, I you're it, it just I, it flashed my it was yesterday I thought about that and I was like oh god that is just look at him De, what is his name Demontis yeah. Sabonis yeah he's, he's a baller. yes he plays he's a baller now he's not as big as his dad. He's a, I think he's no, a, no, no, I think no. he's a small his forward. His dad was big. His dad was big as Shaq. Yeah, so uh, I mean, he was pushing a, Shaq around. He's not as there. big, but shit, I'm telling you, that, I think that hurts them a little bit. Um, if Indiana, what are they right now? Five seed. They're the five seed. They have to play Miami in the first. That's look. If Oladipo's back, like 100 percent back, yeah, and he's, he's back. And, then I'm telling you, I would still take the Heat to win that series, but I th- I would say seven. I would say seven because a, an underrated player for the Indiana Pacers to me is Miles Turner. He's that big man that can. That's, that's the, he's pretty big. He's big and yeah, he can yeah, shoot yeah, threes. Yeah. He's out of Texas. He's one of the stretch fives that people play with now. Because uh, I'm trying to sit here and think that would force the more athletic of the two, Bam, to be out from underneath the paint and have to guard the perimeter more. And that would open up the lanes, obviously, for T.J. Warren to go and slash. Victor Oladipo is going to slash for days. He might be the most athletic player on the floor at that point, besides it's maybe Jimmy Butler. Bam and Butler versus Oladipo and Warren and, Warren and Miles uh, Sabonis. Turner. And Sabonis. If Sabonis was playing, he's not, though. I mean, he's hurt. That's the only problem. What they say about him? Is he out for the whole thing? I think he is out. I oh, think you I, talked that about Oladipo. I know. I, I'm not I'm trusting sure. your Indiana Pacers knowledge today. I think he. I think he <laughs> had a had surgery. I, I did see he was on the injured list next to Oladipo for something. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he had surgery and it caused, and that was basically just going to shut him down. Well, the, you know, one of the best things about Sabonis' dad is that he gave us one of the greatest greatest sayings ever because he's not your Vetus, he's not my Vetus, he's our Vetus. <sighs> Dang it. Dad jokes. Where's Dad Kawhi? jokes. Yeah, when I do that, you should go. <laughs> <laughs> play, the, play the Kawhi Leonard laugh. Who, well, that may be blocked. That may be copyrighted. Kawhi, Ooh. If Ooh. Kawhi was smart, he probably copyrighted that. Yeah, don't you probably. Think? You see this story that popped up? No. Are we still on NBA before yeah, I say yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, no, well, it's not an NBA story. Oh. That's why I was saying. Are we still wanting to speak a little bit more on the NBA? Oh, shit. I mean, there are games tonight. I, I'll just tell you probably the most intriguing game tonight. If it's not Memphis, New Orleans, where you get to see John Morant and Zion play, uh, it would be the Lakers and Utah. Lakers and Utah play tonight. Utah has not looked good because they don't have uh, Bogdanovich. They really don't. Their their scoring is iffy. Um, but I tell you what, they do have that big man down low. Oh God, Rudy Gobert defensively. I think he'll be able to do decent mm-hmm. against anybody that goes into the block. The problem is Anthony Davis don't play in the block, so he. I mean, he's just going to be a pull-up jump shooter and just drive the lane. I think the Lakers win because it's one of those things where so the Lakers barely win against the Clippers. They actually lose pretty substantially against Toronto. Mm -hmm. This is going to be one of those games where LeBron James is like, let me just bounce back really quick and remind y'all who I am. I I could just see that, that how this goes. Utah will just get overmatched. Utah is sitting, I think, at the four spot right now. The three or the four, four spot, yeah. um, but I could feel like seriously the way Utah's playing. That Utah's they, in five. I feel like they could drop. I don't know how many games ahead they are. A half a game in front of Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Well, Oklahoma City plays tonight against Denver, they're, and they're, if Denver sits everybody, Oklahoma City could win that game. They're three and a half against uh, over Dallas, so they're they're pretty much I would say four, five, six. There, they're only one game behind Denver. Mm-hmm. So. They could be three through six, depending on. Because see, here's the thing: all o- those teams could shuffle around. Both of them play tonight. You, all three of them play tonight. Utah, Denver, and Oklahoma City, and Denver, Oklahoma City play each other. 
I could see I could see Oklahoma City beating Denver if Denver doesn't play everybody, uh, just because they know they're trying to get into the just the I playoffs. I don't think they're healthy. playing any of the, their starters long outside minutes. of well, long minutes. No, um, so I could see that being a shakeup, especially this thing about it. If Oklahoma City wins, Denver's going to drop. Utah, you would think jumps them, but I think the Lakers beat Utah. So then that would just they all might either stay the same, or Oklahoma City jumps one of them and one of them slides down. I don't know. It's it's interesting because you it, it speaks to your point who's trying and who's not, mm-hmm. and if they're not That's careful, and if they're not careful, they could find themselves slipping in the seating because sh- there's a difference between yeah we clinch the spot and okay we are the definite number one or two seed. I don't. Everything else is fluid. So right now, looking at those standings, Hunter, you've got. I, I, I'm going to say this: just get ready for the prepare for these matchups. Clippers are going to be playing the uh, Mavericks. Mavericks. I, I think that's going to be. Fun. It's going to be hard Holy for, cow, for either one of those teams to get in a different spot. Um, it'll be entertaining as hell. Actually, those are those are two of the teams. What's bad about it is so there's eight teams in the West. I'd be pulling for Clippers, Nuggets, or Mavs to win, and two of them playing each other. So that's tough. Uh, Lakers will be playing either Memphis, San Antonio, or Portland, I believe. Um, I don't think San Antonio is even good as any. I think Portland's the best of those three, but they're 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 in a hole right now, two and a half behind Memphis. Um, yeah, San Antonio. I think what they won last night and that actually helped propel them yeah. to that spot. And then three through six, you've maybe, got, no, maybe not last night, night before, because they played a night against Philadelphia. Denver, Houston, Utah, and Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Oklahoma are three through six, and it, they can all switch places depending on what happens the next few four, four, four five, six games here. Um, I'm not sure. I just don't feel Oklahoma City at all. Uh, Houston's defense, of course, is god awful. I still think Denver's the best team in the, in the West right now. Denver, the Clippers, and um, I'm gonna go from there on them. The East wise, I think the East is just set. Uh, outside of maybe that eight spot, but let me tell you something. I mean, the Nets have actually like won one or two games with what they have. So if I was go- if I was gonna put a couple hundred bucks down, thousand bucks, whatever it is, whatever I wanted to bet, and thinking I'm gonna make the most money, maximize my money, I would bet right now Raptors and Nuggets because nobody else is. True. Most people are betting Lakers, Bucks, mm-hmm. Celtics. Yeah. Who's picking Raptors and Nuggets? I don't know after the after after what the Raptors just did to the Lakers. I mean, they might be getting a little bit of a nod. I mean, I I I I feel I would pick that way for gambling purposes and almost right now if we're going if you're putting my foot to the fire, those are the two best teams. But, and you can always right say this too. I know they don't really say it really matters in the NBA, but who would you take as the coach? I mean, Nick Nurse won Coach of the Year last year. I mean, he's a great coach for I liked, Toronto. I like him. I like I like Larry. He's a winner and. and so and Siakam can ball. I've been on plenty of basketball courts, Hunter, where, you know, I'm matched up against a guy who's probably better than me, but my team wins because I orchestrate we just the offense better. better. Yeah, the the like, team it, just like, plays better as a whole. <laughs> right. The the point guard when I said that the game manager, you, you go back and and look at the history of the championships. No point guards lead teams to championships. I think only three of them have done it. And only three of them have done it and led their team in scoring, which is which is Steph did it once, uh, Isaiah did it once, and Magic did it once. So just thinking, you know, what what are the point? Name all the great point guards. Steve Nash won two MVPs. He didn't win any championships. Allen Iverson made a final as finals a shooting guard. As a shooting guard, Eric Snow was playing point. Um, Stockton, uh, all-time steals and assist leader, lost two finals. Um, he just happened to run into Michael. Well, but. again, the wings win it, and mm-hmm. that's what I'm kind of getting at is is that the point guards you can have. Uh, who gets the credit for the Raptors last year? Kawhi, he mm-hmm. won it, but Kyle Lowry was still the floor general. And, and to me, it's yeah. almost like a quarterback. Like I like I was trying to mention him earlier, the quarterback's job is to win the game. So when you talk about Cam and his first down dances, that's what someone who's played a position is like. It's just weird because. I get four first downs in this drive, and then somebody fumbled or we don't miss a field goal or don't mm-hmm. score. Who cares? Right. So I just dance for nothing. So to, to me, a point guard, a quarterback's job isn't done until the game's over, and, and it, it's about winning. Think about Jordan's Bulls. Paxson was the, was the point guard. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, Tony Parker was really damn good for San Antonio, but Derek Fisher was the point guard for the Lakers. 
Like, like yeah. Basically, don't f up. Play good defense. Make good ball decisions. Don't turn it over. Get it to um, your wing, how and about Kobe. LeBron won it with Mario Chalmers. Ooh. <laughs> Kyrie, of course, hit the shot in Cleveland, but in in Miami, Kyrie's Chalmers is the point. Guard. Kyrie's best point guard LeBron's played with. Right. Um, That's a true if point you guard. Call him a point guard. I was about to say, <laughs> technically, LeBron's the point guard every team he goes to. But point power, point forward. Who was it? There was one of them. Uh, and they asked, they said something to him about um, should he like reduce his scoring, and he said, "I'm the point guard. It's in the name." And I was like, "You'll never win." And it might have been Westbrook. I'm about to say, "Wait a minute." It might have been Westbrook. I've been saying for years Westbrook would have made uh, the best two. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. He'd have made the best. I'd two. moved him at two so quick. Yeah, uh, for years. I, me Jordan. and my best friend have always said that. If he's, Westbrook he, moved to the two, he'd have a ring. He's young Jordan Iverson esque there, where he's he's. He's short enough to be a point guard, but he's explosive enough to play the two. And if you got a point guard, I always thought, you know, well, you know who I thought they should have went after was when Kendall Marshall came in the league mm-hmm. and led the league in assist. I'm like, that's all he does. Think about Marshall, Kendall playing in Oklahoma with those guys or, or whoever, somebody that distributes the basketball and getting it to Russ. How much Russell would, 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 instead of dribbling the ball up and having to shake a guy, maybe two guys. Mm-hmm. Instead, think about him running the wing. I want you to think about that. your feet, and think, he's filling the lanes and throwing that. alley-oops and finding him moving. So the Thunder, when they lost Durant to Golden State, mm-hmm. they still had Westbrook running the point, and they were struggling to make the playoffs. Yeah. And if they did make it, they got in at least the eighth seed. Well, they move Westbrook, and they bring in, ah, oh, he can score, but he's a pass-first point guard mm-hmm. in Chris Paul. And now look at him, sixth seed. Mm-hmm. And in his first year there, sixth seed. And almost nobody's going to say – Paul's a better athlete than Westbrook at all, mm-hmm. no. but but at as far at as point pure, guard, pure point guard, right? But, but Paul's problem, I've always I've always thought was he's he's so good at what he does, he's never realized the part of winning to where the selfishness never the, got away it, from him. You're right. He he never overcame his selfishness as far as ha- like there's too many times where he comes down the court and just pulls a jumper mm-hmm. and. You know, you say people say mid range jumper is the worst shot for for small forwards and big men. They can take them all they want, mm-hmm. but for a point guard to be taking it, I think that's a bad shot because uh, for point guards taking the three, but if not taking the three, I always found it was more. I always thought I always found it's more dangerous if I drive and dish, is get in get into the lane, and then either I can lay it up or go up with it. A lot of times they'll think you're going to dish it. They just get out of your way. You've right. got a wide open layup. Well, see, that's why I don't understand why really Houston moved off of Chris Paul and put James Harden at the point guard position. I was like, what, what are you doing? He's not <laughs> distributing. He wants those three. He, Dan Tony don't care about that at all. No, no, he don't. He wants the three. He wants the three balls. That's what, he, <laughs> that's what he did with the Suns, made a championship one time and lost. I mean, it don't matter. <laughs> he said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, y'all win, but not, a, not the chip. But well, Jay Williams is fired up about the Raptors' title chances, so he's in my my ballpark on that one. Um, I think uh, who else was it? I think Kendrick Perkins is high on him too. I, I do want to mention um, Orlando's uh, Jonathan Isaac's uh, standing for the national anthem the other day and 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 doing it for 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 Jesus base is basically what he was saying. And then he, then he, last night he he tore his ACL or yesterday Hunter mm-hmm. driving to the basket on a little hop step. He, there wasn't no contacts. So There's nothing. I don't no. think there's any malicious. No, it wasn't doing to it at all. Not at all. Um, just kind of a little hop step through the through the lane and landed on. But just sad that, that, that you know the one guy that, that 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 stood up and said something of that nature. I'm not you know as far as bringing Jesus into it. I'm I'm kind of you know as excited about that as. It, it, mm-hmm. And then he gets hurt, and now I guess he'll lose his his platform for that for that. But um, you know. NBA, the NFL wouldn't let Tebow write messages on his right on his uh on his eyes, and then they they freaked out about that him you know praying uh, on the field. So it's just it's just a different time. Um, Raptors, like I said, let, let me go through this real quick. Here's their rankings, Hunter. Mm-hmm. You've got Milwaukee one, Lakers two, Clippers three, Raptors four, Rockets five, Ugh. Miami six, and Denver seven. Uh, almost half his team arrived late. Then Murray, hamstring, Harris, hip. Will Barton is the other one we forgot to mention. Mm. 
suffered injuries before the restart opener. Denver holds on to the third spot, falling to fourth or fifth, means a possible second round date with the Lakers instead of a f- finals. I the, the I don't think the Lakers want to see him in the second round. I don't think Denver's actually worried about anybody in particular. I think they match up well for everybody. That's the Lakers probably aren't worried. The Clippers aren't worried about who they match up with. I don't I don't believe. Mm-hmm. Although Lakers, Danny Green did mention, you know, maybe they didn't want Portland. But um, Portland's still on the outside looking in. <laughs> yeah, they might not even have to worry about them. All right, uh, let's see. Move over a few new news and notes. How about the big news real quick? Uh, let's finish this Do the day up with college football. Yes. Um, yes, The indeed. Pac-12 players. Uh, have, oh, we have another little tidbit to add at the end. Yeah? Yeah, but you go ahead. Uh, have, have come up and basically come together and said that they're not going to be – they've made a list of demands, and I'll have to – the players, the, the players have made yeah. a list of demands, and really, you know, this is where you get to <clears throat> uh, the kind of the crutch of things we've been talking about the last few years in in, in college football and, and in sports in general. So, what they've here, here's their co- demand slash ask for: um, fair market pay, rights, and freedoms. Number one, they want to distribute fifty percent of every sports total conference revenue evenly among the athletes in their respective sports. So they're asking for a fifty percent split, <laughs> straight up, and uh, for all athletes, not just them. Yeah, six-year athletic scholarships to foster undergraduate and graduate degrees. Um, so when you, you know, in, mm-hmm. instead of it, right now it's kind of a year-by-year thing. Uh, and then you also have graduates and and and, and under, that they end up transferring and, and doing something else. You know, you know, grad people know about college graduate schools. You can go to a different school maybe sometimes, but sometimes kids want to stay, and they don't have scholarships uh, uh, for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, elimination of all policies and practices restricting or deterring our freedom of speech, our ability to fully participate in charitable work, and our freedom to participate in campus activities outside of mandatory athletic uh, participation. I'm not sure exactly what they're asking for on that one. Uh, ability of all sports to transfer one time without punishment. And additionally, in cases of abuse or serious negligence. I think that's uh, that, that's a, that should be of the forefront. With to coach, be able to freely choose where you want to go. Every student in the school can transfer. Except for, for student athletes. Yeah. Uh, and if they do, the coaches they're can punished. leave to get money. Yeah, I mean. And, and what they also and what they don't think about just guys, just think if you're a college running back. You're already getting wasted carries and your body beat up in your prime already. The prime for running backs are 19 to 25, basically. And if if you're wasting a year on transfer, then they're wasting a year of your prime, basically. Mm-hmm. And, I, and that's a lot of money that you could be using or losing or, or however. Um, there, the fifth one uh, is the ability to com- complete eligibility after participating in a pro draft. Basically, if they don't get drafted, Draft they won't be able to come back. The NBA has, and the NCAA have set that up to where uh, you can go to the NBA Combine mm-hmm. and test those waters out, mm-hmm. and if it doesn't seem like you're going to get drafted, you can come back. Yeah. I don't know if it's exactly if you don't, you don't get do the drafted. Hire agent yes. do all that stuff. Yes. That's what they're kind of doing. Um, and this the, was just the Pac-12? Is the only that's list? just the Pac-12 players coming together. But the Pac-12 said they've been in, the, the players that, that have put this out have said they've been in contact with with some of the other schools as well, Hunter. So it's not just... We got a movement coming. I don't think it's just going to be them. Mm -mm. Uh, So this is kind of a disgusting response. Did you see Washington State? Oh, uh, I believe so. Washington Washington State Cougars. um, Yeah, Warren's wide receiver. It it says, report says, Washington State players who support the Pac-12 movement will be released from the team. Straight up. Now, wait a minute. I thought they were students. Now, who said that? Washington State, the athletic director or the coach? I don't know. This is college. Because this is from College Football Talk. Uh, it says reports that Washington State players who support the Pac-12 movement released from the team. Uh, Washington State releasing players who support. It's on NBCSports.com. I'm, I'm not sure mm-hmm. um, exactly who the official official is. I guess it's athletic director and coaches. I was about to say because I'll say this: if Mike Leach was still the coach as Wash at Washington State, he'd be, be that would that would. They he would have been okay with that yeah. because Mike Leach is a prog- he's very progressive, he is he always wants change. He's the one that's even brought up before. He said, 
Well, if FCS can do it, why can't we do right. it? Talking about the the, co- the college football playoff. And the head with the of the NCAA teams. don't even know how the FCS bowl works. So if, <laughs> if Mike Leach was still the head coach at Washington State, I really, I, 100%, I don't think that would have become a problem. I think he might have actually been all for it. The problem is, is if that's the athletic director, mm-hmm. because then you realize where the money lies. And who has the money controls everything else. And it's going to be the ADs. It. it Hunter, it's sickening to, for them to even do that or say that. Just we're going to take you, away, we're going to kick you off the team, release you from the team. Now let's also think about this in this Corona situation. If stu, if if your argument is that this education is so important and more important than anything in this world, mm-hmm. because that's what these guys will argue that say, that that'll say you can't pay them because you're paying them education, and that's the most important thing, Hunter. If education is the most important thing, should football teams allow walk-ons this year? No. Not at all, should they? Mm-mm. Should a single walk-on be allowed to play on any sport? No. Because you've got these scholarship players who are there who earned their education being given to them, and then they're they're being forced to play. you, you got to come out there to play, and or they're going to cut you in Washington. Um, so if if the education is the important thing, should even should college football fans who make that argument, Hunter, the same people who say don't pay them, should they not also be saying, you know what, this education stuff's really important. I believe they shouldn't even play this year because they'll have a whole semester and year of not worrying Look, about I'm sit here not and... being burdened by going to practice. I'm gonna sit You're here gonna and be tell people. Look, edu- I, I'm always for you know education. I think it's great. If you want to go back, I would. I did it. I'm still doing it right now. I went back, decided to get a, get a bachelor's degree. I think it would do great for myself. But to look at somebody and to tell them that if you don't apply yourself fully to getting educated, that you won't have success, people forget. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure Jeff Bezos got a high school degree. Gates does too. And Steve Bill Jones, Gates. All of them I mean, and now college. look, now that I know those are extremes, right. but I mean, how much Hunter? How much? What kind of jobs and how much is a African American studies degree from North Carolina? I don't know. Because they screwed them kids into the ground. They did the way the University of North Carolina did, and not only did they do the the, By the, the fake football classes. players and the basketball yeah. players that way with fake classes. The the audacity and gall of them to do it under the African American program. Mm-hmm. They didn't do it under like math, right, or communications, right. It was it it was it's actually a, it's pretty racist on on how they handled the situation. Yeah. Now I didn't even want I don't even want to get into that part of it. What I want to get into uh, of the fact of that the 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 the, the, the college football fans talk out of each side of their mouth so bad on this stuff. Why do you care as a grown man that a nineteen year old gets paid what he's deserved? I don't see a single person going down to Harris Teeter or Walmart or something mm-hmm. and saying, you can't pay that kid that. Right. Because can't you make $40,000 at 19 years old at other jobs? Mm-hmm. Teachers getting paid 40000 at 22 years old coming out of college. So the argument that you can't pay them because it waste money is just insane to me. And and the and what they're doing is that the, the generational... And what they're suing and saying is the generational, and I've been I've been kind of saying it like this, if a, the generational income or money that they could be making, and just think about it, if you're a local kid or student at one of these local high schools, let's not even say football, and this is what I like to do, let's say a poor kid that's a wrestler, mm-hmm. okay? His family lives in a poor situation, whatever. Would it not be better to give that kid, if he earns a scholarship, Hunter, Say so the uh, average scholarship at Duke is fifty thousand dollars. So let's say the NCAA set all athletics athletic scholarships at fifty grand. Wouldn't it be better for the government, which and, and that that does a lot of these loans, that does a lot of these grants, guarantee all the scholarships at fifty grand? This is a starter. This is before you sell tickets and stuff, and then say you get that, but you can use it wherever you want. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna give you fifty thousand, Hunter. If you want to go to Duke. And, and, pay, and, and pay fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, then you got your money's worth. But if I go to Appalachian and the and the tuition's ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars, that's not the same as that fifty grand. So why can't I get the forty grand and then use it for housing, use it for things? Think if you're a poor wrestler or poor track and field person, and and, and your family's poor, and you could get forty thousand dollars a year 
for playing the sport. Don't you think that would do a real good job into getting your not your whole family out of poverty as opposed to just giving you a piece of paper after four years and say, now you can go earn some money that, uh, instead of the money that you could have had? Your family could have $200,000 in the bank after four years if you just saved it, put it in trust, whatever you want to do with it. Mm-hmm. Pay for rent, pay for whatever. Your kid is 19 years old. You can join the Army and get $40,000 a year, can't you, and risk your life. Mm -hmm. So why can't you get paid what you're worth for this, then take that money and take care of Mama, take care of Daddy. I don't see how you can say a kid taking care of his family is a bad thing. When that one kid is the one with the talent, he's the one that the family raised, got into college, and now they're not paying them. And and, and so the the, the argument is— on some of this, it, a lot of this is is looking at the looking at these athletic directors and, and and how much they're making on some of this stuff. So the Pac-10 commissioner Larry Scott's made five five point three million dollars a year. If he took four hundred fifty thousand dollars instead of five point three million, which is a still a top one percent salary in the nation, every single Pac-10 football player is could get an annual well yeah whatever <laughs> annual stipend. Of four thousand dollars, that's everyone. That's walk-ons and everybody. So you're saying, it you would rather give the commissioner, who did nothing but host some rich people in the suite at the ball game, five point three million, or every kid could get a four thousand dollars stipend. And your argument is that guy deserves it, and they don't. And they're they're doing the weight lifting. Mm-hmm. They're doing the playing. And especially like we just said, the walk-ons should walk-ons be even allowed to play this year if, if the only thing that's important is the student at, is the student and the learning, it, it, is that it is that so let's no look. you need to go focus on school right now, boy. So Clemson, fifty-five million dollar training facility. training facility, which Hunter hadn't they already won national championships? Yeah, hadn't they already got big recruits? Yeah. So what do they need a a a training facility that includes an indoor slide, a bowling alley, and a miniature golf course? And then remember, Clemson doesn't cover your health care cost at Clemson. They make mm-hmm. you pay them for the premium. Mm-hmm. That, that Clemson makes their pay players pay them for insurance. They sell it to them. They won't give it to them. They sell it to them. So Clemson is just making hand over foot money. Dabo's yeah. making $9 million. And then you sit there and got the forty five the 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 fifty five million dollar could have said then I think about Dabo's money. Let's put this in perspective, bringing this around full circle. Mm-hmm. XFL. That's what my that's what I wanted to talk about when I said we have one more announcement. <laughs> XFL just sold the Rock just bought the XFL for fifteen. Him and his group they just 15 bought it for fifteen million dollars. Million dollars now, Hunter. If you can run a professional football league. For $15 million. Well, they probably can't, but... I mean, they bought it for that, right. yes. What could you do for $55 million? Basically, Clemson could buy... Clemson could build a building with putt-putt and a bowling alley in it, or they could start a semi-pro league, run it for three years, and pay all the players that are going to Clemson money mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. instead of nothing. Now, See, honey, that's what I wanted to talk about after that. <laughs> so Dabo makes $9 million a year. Yeah. In two years of coaching at Clemson. He could have bought the XFL. He can buy the XFL, and then those same poor students that he lets play for free on his team. He could pay them the next year. He could pay them yep. $50,000 each to be on his team, mm-hmm. be in his league. Eight teams. Well, wasn't see, that's wasn't there eight teams in the league? Yes. So, uh, yes, four, he could buy, four. Dabo in two years at Clemson could buy – Eight professional teams and fund them. I'm just saying, look, that, that's why I wanted to bring that up, obviously, after but you were talking college football. But the kids can't get nothing but, but spaghetti. That's why I wanted to bring it up after you you brought up the college football is because, to me, the fact that the XFL has now been brought – not brought back fully, but they have a backer. It is now with The Rock. And, I, you know, I raised my eyebrows when I saw how much it went for. You know, it was only $15 million. I said, Really? Really, fifty million. I could I could have probably got an investment group together if I knew that's all it was going to uh, going to be to buy the rights to that league. But I'm guessing McMahon just wanted out from under it. But that's beside the point. The point is is the fact that 
the XFL, there is still an opportunity there. If someone was, if someone with the right mind, whether it be me who has been obviously covering sports now going on six years or someone else that has been in the sports media for a long time and maybe a few other people that have the good business mindset of it, that could be a great supplemental league if they were able to get some sort, some sort of joint partnership with the NFL. Screw the NCAA. You can leave the NCAA at the door and go ahead and recruit straight out of high school if you want. That would be what would be great for the XFL because what I'm what, what would be cool is, Rock, give me a call, buddy. I got I got ideas for you. The XFL, somehow, someway, if you want to be self-sustaining and actually be a supplemental football team, you have to somehow, I don't care how you do it, if you got to get on your knees or something, you somehow have to get in bed with the NFL. I hate to say it that way, but you do. And and I'm not and you have to let them know we're not trying to be the NFL. We would like for to be an extra place for you to be able to pull talent. How many kids go Yeah. Yeah, at 19, 20 years old? Absolutely. Absolutely. But the fact that the XFL for some reason has now a small light of life in it just because there's somebody that has bought it i know the rock is people forget though the rock has football has a football background he played at the university of miami during the u days okay the only reason he didn't get to play at the next level i'm not mistaken is because he got injured and so he went on to do wwe yeah so but it's one and it's but it's one of those things where it's like from a business standpoint, The Rock understands business, okay? And if I'm telling you, if the if the XFL could somehow, some way, I I said while you were while you were gone doing something, I said if I would have known that, do you know how easy it would have been for us to get probably some sort of an investment group together to just go and put a 15 million dollar bid in on a football league? He paid. Oh my God, yes. He just pledged a hundred million dollars. How much money did Patrick Mahomes just put into the Kansas City Royals that he could have just owned the whole XFL? Mm-hmm. XFL easily. All the jerseys be Jordan. Think about that. Mm-hmm. Odell Beckham gets six million a year. Off endorsements. Mm-hmm. So I mean Nike. LeBron has a billion dollar lifetime deal with Nike. I want you to think about that for an endorsement. I don't see, you know what, I seriously, I don't see why one of these athletic clothing companies didn't come in and do it. Think about how many times, what about the Under Armour All-American game that they play where Under Armour is the main sponsor? This the, this the Under Armour Football League. You could still call it the XFL, You could, but you could call it Under Armour XFL League or whatever you want to call it. So much money. They can, and they, and they do that. You got you're going to make money back off of jersey sales because it's Under Armour. You could have the players all have Under Armour shoes. You're selling the Under Armour. You make, you make all this money back. Too much. They're making so much money. Think about it. Say Odell has a, has a signature signature shoe. You think somebody's gonna not going to want to buy Odell's signature shoe if they're a wide receiver? Absolutely they'll buy it because they'll think they're OBJ. They'll think it'll make me play like OBJ. Number one is Tom, isn't it? No, one was Oh, it was one. No. Tom. Tom makes a lot of that money off Uggs. <laughs> Tom. Think about it. No, I mean, think about it. You know who else probably could afford to do that? Gatorade. For God's sake, they have the G League. A five whole football. Yeah. And what and what would and what did I just say it should be for the NFL a supplemental league like the G League is I'm telling you man Yeah it probably yeah I'm trying to 
turn me back on. Yeah. yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. You I mean, all missed point... y'all missed some very important and, and enlightening talk. I think you heard some of it. Uh, we got to get better at mashing buttons around here. Uh, anyway, what I was saying, folks, I, I'll refresh. If you didn't hear me, I'm I'm sorry again. Um, I, I was talking about the Rock, Nike, Michael Jordan, Adidas, Under Armour, the, about them possibility of of them being able to smoke. Well, at fifteen million dollars, that's chump change to these folks, right? And, and they could easily you know, put the money into this league to pay these players. Now, now, Hunter, as far as college football is concerned, I've seen another movement that the Power Five conferences, now this could be big, and I've always thought this is, this could happen as well. If the NCAA wants to keep to their amateur model mm-hmm. and to keep to all their, what they're doing, the Power Five conferences are, are looking at breaking away from the NCAA and doing their I don't see own – doing their own thing. Oh my God, if they I don't do see that, that, they could pay the players. Pay the players. And not, and, like, think about it. They could just say... But then you're getting all the best recruits, really. You're yeah. getting every single one of them. And then it comes down to ba- basically just a bidding war. That's just what it would be. I can only imagine... I can only imagine some of the lucrative money that some of these high school players will make just coming out of high school. Yeah, I mean, it's generational wealth. And people will argue that a piece of paper is more important than five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> That's pretty tough. I could, I'll be honest. I know the piece of paper might help, but I could make a lot of investments to flip that five hundred thousand dollars. Okay, Hunter. If I give you, if I give you thirty thousand dollars, you can still pay for community college. True. And that you can get more. There's more skills learned at community colleges than, than you know actual many, colleges. You know how right? many houses I could flip at five hundred thousand dollars to just make that double. There's a lot of things. There's that a lot can of do things, and, and then there's a lot of things. <laughs> but but we'll make the argument that that piece of paper is 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 worth so much. And, and and I just like I said, you can look at the North Carolina Tar Heels football and basketball program, and be like, well, what what are those guys? You know, and, and 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 you think about it, you know, you never see like these guys as sideline reporters or announcers mm-hmm. or or anything else ever again. You either make it in the NFL. Or, or they or they tell you to kick rocks and hope your degree gets you a job at managing some managing a Walmart or something. Yeah, that's what they're the what they're hoping. That's the truth. Um, so XFL, we may get some some of that back, and we'll we'll just see what happens. That I think they'll get another investor. Fifteen million is awful. It's yeah, awful that was low. awful cheap. I'm pr- I'm serious. I think McMahon just saw that the Brock was a buddy of his and said, "Look, I, I really need to offload this right now. Uh, would you like to take it?" And I think another investor has to come in. And you want to know what I think the XFL needs to push for? They need to push for ownerships. Mm. They need to push for the if these are going to be the eight teams that we run with, we need owners of these eight teams that are not going to be afraid to, to stick their neck out maybe for a year or two and help us be self-funding uh, at while we build capital as the years go on. Because I feel like that's, that'll just be easier uh, than them trying to come up with just a lump sum of money that we're going to have to distribute to eight teams the whole time. Like if there's an owner, if there are multiple owners, just like how the NFL is set up as, I think it would be a great idea if NFL owners got involved in the XFL and decided they wanted to own a, a my their minor league team. You know, I, I think it would be fantastic. Squeaky comment about my something about Tony Parker, 2014 Spurs. We'll, we're gonna we'll figure that one out. But either way, he wasn't the damn best player on that team. Uh, do 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 do. Um, anything else, Hunter? That's all for me. That's all for you. That's all for me. I wonder if they got these uh overall stats in in it. Do 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 do. do. He wasn't the MVP of, of that finals. That was no, Kawhi. It was Kawhi. <laughs> That's- but he's right. Tony Parker, I think, scored two more or five more points or something like that. Oh, he scored one more point than he did in the final. So, Squeak, Squeaky, you're technically right, but he was not the MVP, not the leader of that team. In fact, Manu Ginobili is the leader of all those Spurs teams. Manu Ginobili had a more successful career than LeBron James. Manu Ginobili. You're right. And people say, oh, no, is Duncan the – Duncan? Duncan's the head of that team. No. Because Ginobili beat Duncan in the Olympics with mm-hmm. La Loser in the most shameful USA basketball performance in, in American history. Brought to you by Ginobili. <laughs> I love my name, Ginobili. Right. <laughs> 
Right. He's had more successful career than LeBron, right? I'm not commenting or speculating. Had more championships. I am not. I'm not doing it. He's got more go. He's got. I'm to not doing beat it. Beat him in the beat him in the Olympics no. with no. Duncan on his team. The only thing I got to say before we get off. 2022, baby. Let's go. Ginobili beat LeBron and Duncan with Fabricio Oberto. Explain it. Explain it. I'm not going to explain Other than it. he's the GOAT. I'm not going to explain it. No. <laughs> God, no. no. <laughs> but, but you no. can't. I mean, I, I just don't see how you could argue that Duncan is the leader of the team when, when he was beat by Ginobili head-to-head in the Olympics. Nope. Nope. No what? Nope. I, I'm not I'm not commenting on none of it. I'm just saying nope. <laughs> and uh that's that. All right, folks. Uh we'll be back uh Wednesday for some more fun. Uh I think Zach will be in this week unless he gets hurt or, or somebody has to come in at work. So we'll see you guys uh, next week on KT or Wednesday at two o'clock, KDCbroadcasting.com.